What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Basics with Babish Live. I, if you're joining us for the first time, welcome. If you're joining us for the fifth or sixth time, welcome as well. Uh, tonight we're making weeknight meals, quick weeknight meals. Uh, we're making two of them. And I know I'm still standing off camera. I know it's kind of strange. Uh, but uh, yeah, my, my inclination is to do an announcer voice whenever we start one of these streams. But uh, I'll just walk on. Come say hi. What's up, folks? How we doing? Wow, 4,700 people here for weeknight meals, no less. Thank you guys for coming and hanging out. There's a big delay here, so I'm already out here looking at your comments. You can't even see me yet. Uh, to answer your question, what are we making? We're making two different weeknight meals, quick weeknight meals. Um, uh, we're we're, we're going to be making uh, 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 pan-fried chicken thighs that we're, are, we're serving with like a braised sweet potato and apple mixture. Then we're also doing a sheet pan dinner, which is a popular way to, you, know, you only need one pan, you just need a sheet pan. And uh, you cook different elements of the meal in different stages. So you, they, everything all finishes all at the same time. And tonight we're gonna be making potatoes with salmon and asparagus. Um, love you too, DJ. Teach me guitar, please, thank you. What's up, folks? What's going on with you? D Dylan Myers, our first super chat. Thank you. Great beard today. You didn't, you didn't see my beard. What are you talking about? Uh, we got a new member. Hello. We have a new member. Uh, memberships are a new uh, spades is, is the new member tonight. Um, memberships are a new feature on the show uh, where I can share some uh, exclusive content, you guys, if you pay uh, five bucks a month, you get access to exclusive content, a, an exclusive Discord server, um, sneak peeks at upcoming episodes, behind the scenes, and more. Uh, it's a great new feature. It's just like Patreon. Anybody who's a Patreon supporter, uh, it's the exact same thing. You're going to be getting, still get the exact same benefits. The only difference here is that you get access to some special emojis and badges. Uh, emojis of my face doing silly things and badges um, to indicate how long you have been a member. Son of a Pizza Man, thank you very much for your $5 uh, uh, super chat. Can I get a shout out for my YouTube channel, Son of a Pizza Man? There you go. Son of a Pizza Man, go check it out. Have you been keeping up with Great British Bake Off? If so, who do you want to win? I have not because uh, I, I don't have cable and the only way for me to watch it online as far as I know is to steal it. And I don't want to do that. Um, I watched the whole, you know, 2017 season on Netflix. I was rooting for, for um, I don't want to do any spoilers, but, you know, if you haven't watched it by now, it's your fault. Uh, I was rooting for Richard. Uh, I thought he was the man. Um, was that, oh, no, it was, his name was Stephen, not Richard. Stephen. Stephen was, I, I was, I was rooting for him when, ever since he did that, like, Louis Vuitton bread purse that was, like, gorgeous. And it was, like, three different kinds of, of beautiful breads, and he, it had, like, a breadstick. Uh, um, shoulder strap chain. It was unbelievable. Uh, <clears throat> and I, you know, I think he, he should have won if the whole series, w if you judged for the whole series, because he had so many amazing bakes. Uh, but uh, that last episode, he screwed up. So it's, it, he, 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 he rightfully didn't win, but uh, he, he's the man. Josh G. F um, oh, you just asked that. Josh G., thank you for the question. Uh, if you guys haven't checked out Great British Baking, Great Great British Bake Off yet, I don't know what you're doing with yourselves. Um, thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out. Uh, I'm getting, I just heard, saw one or two, one or two people um, say that my audio is a little low. Um, what do we What do we think, guys? Volume. I'm seeing volume. Okay, volume is perfect. Volume up. I don't know. Turn up your volume, guys, on your computers. That, that'll help. Um, I want to introduce, uh, for those of you who don't know him already, my, the Roz to my Fraser, my producer and best friend and business partner, Sawyer Jacobs, who's in the other room administrating the stream. Sawyer, why don't you give him a shout out? Hello, Emerald City. What's doing? What's happening? Very happy to be here. <laughs> Very excited for these lessons. You know, I'm a working man. I'm here at work all the time. Looking forward to some weeknight meals, something I could cook my wife, et cetera, et cetera. Hello, everyone. Happy, uh... Red Dead Eve. Happy Red Dead Eve, ladies and gentlemen. Red Dead Redemption 2 is coming out tomorrow. Uh, I've already pre-downloaded it. 
it is ready to go. Uh, for those of you who might be curious, because people are always asking what I'm drinking right now, Sawyer and I are sipping on Dalmore 15, which I'm a little disappointed in. It was pretty pricey, and I'm not crazy about it. It's very oaky, and it's got kind of a weird fruity... I don't know what to call it, but it, it also, I'm getting like pumpkin pie spice when I'm eating it. I'm getting like like cinnamon and, and, and nutmeg and, and uh, allspice. And normally that'd be nice, but with like the weird fruitiness and the oakiness, it's just... It's just not hitting the right balance for me, um, but it is very good, so I'm enjoying it. Dalmore, if you want to sponsor me, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I'm not above that. Um, I'm yeah, seeing a lot of volume comments. Out. Yeah, I'm right, going to give you a little bit of juice. We're going to turn up the mic a little bit, folks, and let us know what it sounds like. Tell, Sawyer, tell me once you've done it. I've done it. I've done it. Okay, he's done it. Test. One, two, three. How we, how we looking, folks? You guys hearing me better now? How about now? How old am I? I'm 31 years of age. 31 years young. Um, let's see. No, dude, there's nothing wrong with ice. Volume too high. Cute. Um, volume is fine. I think that we're that we're probably. I think we're probably good. But, let's see. I'm trying. I'm trying to see. Oh my God. Good. Better. Yes. Good. Better. Exactly the same. Much better. Okay, all right, people, people are liking where, I, I'm seeing more positive than negative, so I think that we're in a good place volume-wise. For, for whoever just knocked me for having ice in, in, my, in my bourbon, or not my bourbon, the scotch, for having ice in my scotch, there's nothing wrong with ice and scotch. I know that there's this perception that that makes you a wimp or whatever, but the fact is that cold water opens up scotch in a, in a, in a way that, um, that, that, that nothing else really can. Like, if you ever have the opportunity, have a, you know, a glass of bourbon or scotch, get a pipette of ice water or just a little bit of ice water and just, just hit it with a little, 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 a few couple drops of ice water and tell me it doesn't like open it right up. You get a whole lot more flor floral t notes and sweetness and it, it, it brings out a different side of the whiskey. And I'm using a big, it's called a king cube, you know, a gigantic ice cube here. And this melts a lot more slowly than it would if I just had a whole bunch of ice cubes in here because there's less surface area. Uh, so this is melting very slowly and it's just giving me a little bit of a uh, little bit, a little bit of an icy watery hit in here. And, um, you know, let, let's, let's do away with the, uh, the, the negative perception of, of drinking ice and whiskey. I don't think there's anything wrong with it at all. Mm. Tasty. The chat is insane. You're right. 5,600 people. We didn't, I, I didn't tweet about it, didn't, didn't put it on Instagram, and uh, didn't get any uh, f promotion from, from YouTube, and, and this is a pretty good turnout. Thank you guys for coming out. Um, weeknight meals are a tricky thing because, uh, you know, generally you're, you've only got 45 minutes, hour tops, to throw something together, and you want something generally that's healthy and filling and tasty, and uh, it's very hard to strike that balance, especially... Uh, w w when you're strapped for time. So um, what I've got here are two very easy weeknight meals. Both can be accomplished, I think, within 45 minutes or less. Let's see if I eat my words um, when I make them now. Let's see if I can make them in 45 minutes. Granted, I cook a little slower here because I'm talking with you guys and talking with the chat. Um, let's see. We're all just cold and alone. Me too, man. It's cold. I'm not alone, though. Oh, we got some super chats here. We got a new member, uh, Rebecca Moses. Thank you for joining membership. Jody Nuago, thank you for your super chat. British Cook, thank you for your very generous 20 pound super chat. Come to the UK and cook with you. For that kind of super chat, absolutely, I'm there. Henry Velasquez, $5, thank you so much. Hey, what's up, shout out? Henry Velasquez, hi, shout out. Um, so that's just catching up with the super chat here, folks. Um, and again, memberships, uh, new feature on the channel. Opportunity to see some behind the scenes stuff, some, um, some uh, bloopers, some uh, uh, exclusive episodes just for Patreon and YouTube members. Exciting new way to take in more, get more babish into your day. Um, and I was thinking of posting some exclusive content tonight. If, uh, if we have time later on, if we're waiting on something in the oven, maybe I'll pull it up. I have a blooper reel, an old blooper reel uh, that is a lot of fun, and I will post it there, and we can take a look at it. Um, I'm seeing we got some new members. Thank you guys. Let's see. Ayanto Thomas, thank you so much for joining. Oh, uh, Rebecca Moses, we already got you. 
Uh, Tom F., thank you for joining the membership. Juby Jubes, uh, thank you for, for joining. Appreciate it. Just trying to scroll over here. Oh, I don't know. My thing is broken. I'm going to refresh. Okay. So, all right. I say uh, we get started. What do you think, Jake? Let's go. All right. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty hungry. So, let's... Um, Let's start with the uh, chicken skillet. I, th I say that we start there. That's, uh, that's an old favorite of mine. Anybody who has followed me on Reddit for a long time, I'm not expecting you to, that'd be weird. But if you have, um, you know that uh, uh, I posted ages ago, talking like four years ago, uh, about this very simple, delicious whiskey chicken skillet uh, with sweet potatoes and Granny Smith apples. And it's... Um, a very simple uh, very quick thing to put together but the chicken comes out really great like you know chicken thighs are kind of a kind of a pain to cook sometimes because you know in order to to really get the tenderness out of them you got to hit a tar certain target temperature you ideally want to braise them because uh, the liquid will, will help break down the muscle fibers and the, and the collagen and make them more tender so this is a sort of happy medium where we're cooking them in liquid with the with the the skin still exposed, so that way the meat is getting the attention that it needs, and the skin remains uh, uh, untouched by liquid, so it can stay nice and crisp. And we're also uh, searing these in the ca not cast iron. Oh yeah, you can use cast iron uh, in a stainless steel or cast iron skillet until we get the skin nice and crisp. And then we also build up some fond, which, as anybody who's fond of me knows, that I'm fond of fond. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and peel our sweet potatoes here. Jake, do we have any questions or anybody anybody that? Uh... Uh, we got a nice um, super chat from Tattooed Dad saying you've given him the courage to take some risks in the kitchen, and we really appreciate that. Keep doing That's it, really my man. Nice, Tattooed Dad. Thank you. Thank you so much for the kind words. I'm really happy to hear that that uh, you're taking more risks in the kitchen. That's the only way uh, to move onward and upward is to. Um, I hope that that was the takeaway from my most recent episode of binging with the cinnamon rolls, showing my mistakes. Like that happens a bunch on the show. I'll make mistakes and show them if they if they're you know minor or if they're if they end up working out okay. But the fact is that I made a batch of cinnamon rolls and I messed them up, and I decided like you know, it, 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 cooking shows are too often. It's just like beautiful people making beautiful food with minimal effort. And it kind of makes you feel like a, sh like a schmuck. Uh, like, oh, why can't I do that? And, um, uh, I, you know, I thought, like, how about a nice average to below average looking man making things wrong and, and, making, and, then, and then writing his wrongs and maybe getting a makeover. Maybe I should give that a shot. Uh, I, I don't know how you give a bald guy a makeover, though. Is that even possible? Usually that like makeovers involve a, a new hairstyle, uh, and that's just not going to happen. And if, and if you touch my beard, I'm just, I'm just going to freak out. So no, no makeover happening here, I guess, uh, unless you think makeup would look good on me. I've always wanted to try eyeliner. Um, we're, we're, we're going down, a, we're going down a, re a weird road here. We can return to the sweet potato talk. We got our three sweet potatoes peeled here. Uh, the, this is looking a little blown out. Sorry, guys. Usually, this is usually what happens. I end up um, seeing that you know, shots need a little bit of adjustment on the fly. You know, it's just a two-person operation. We're, we're, we're just trying to make the most professional, best-looking stream we can. But the fact is that we're just two regular Joes, one who likes to cook and one who's a lawyer and, and, a, and a creative partner. And, uh, and uh, you know, we, we don't have a streaming bone between us, whatever that means. Um... <laughs> And so now what I'm doing here is I'm just chopping up these sweet potatoes into nice bite-sized pieces. And to do that, I'm starting by cutting them into maybe half-inch planks like that. So we got those about half-inch thick. And then I'm um, going to go ahead and maybe two at a time here. What am I doing? Oh, gee whiz. Okay. <laughs> Get it together, Andy. Uh, for those of you who don't know, that's, that's what a lot of people refer to me as, is Andy, because uh, that's, that's what I grew up as, 
my mother called me Andy, and uh, and I, I, I made the transition to Andrew in college, and uh, it, it was a difficult transition, but but I, I made it through, and I've been happy with it. I, I changed it because I was obsessed with the name Andrew Jackson when I was a kid. Not Andrew Jackson himself. He he was he he was he was not not the greatest from from what I hear. Um, but uh, the name Jackson, I thought was the coolest. So if I ever have a kid, his name is gonna be Jackson for sure. Jackson Andrew, named after me and Andrew Jackson. I'm going off the rails here. We haven't even gotten started yet, and I'm already starting to get punchy. Uh, <clears throat> so we're cutting these guys down into manageable mouth size pieces as is the end game for many recipes um, I love this knife by the way this is a brand new knife uh, that, that has just recently made its first few appearances on the show and uh, I don't lock my finger off with it because it is wicked sharp I'm not sponsored by Shun or anything by the way I'm not trying to sell you nothing but uh, this this guy it's pricey. He's a, he's 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 in the he's in the hundreds or in the you know the low to mid one hundred uh, range. Looking at uh, I think it was like one fifty for this knife, and um, it's pricey, but boy, it does a job. Uh, and when you when you get it nice and sharp, when you hit it with the stone and and hit it with the steel, like it's it's second to none. Um, I actually oh I can't talk about that. I'm under NDA. Never mind. Never mind. Hopefully you guys will see something, a collaboration in the near future that I had to buy this knife for. But uh, not entirely sure if it's going to happen because uh, this person, whoever they are, is notorious for shooting a lot of stuff and then deciding, eh, I didn't like that. And just axing it. So guys, keep your fingers crossed that that collab is made public. Go. I've already got like too much sweet potato here. I might stop after this one and save this guy for later. Um, it's just me and Sawyer eating tonight, and I don't know about you guys, but we are staying up all night tonight. Not all night, but we're staying up late to wait for the release of Red Dead Redemption 2, which I have pre downloaded on my PS4. And We've seen the initial reviews and how much how crazy people are about it. I'm personally not looking forward to like maintaining my the happiness of my camp and like having to eat every meal and having to you know it sounds like a little bit too much upkeep for me. I I, I like open world games where you can kind of do your own thing if you want like just just go off and and uh, you know that's why I've been playing a lot of Spider Man Marvel Spider Man the new one. That's where, you know, I recently did an episode from it. Because anytime I want, I can just go web-slinging. I don't have to stick with the story all the time or go make my make uh, the rest of the Avengers happy or anything like that. Uh, I've been ranting about video games for a minute. So, are we got any questions out there? Uh, the most important question I'm seeing is, what is your PS4 username? <laughs> no. Um, I mean, we're... we're <laughs> We're thinking about going live tomorrow with our gaming exploits. You're oh, have to that's tell true. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. Guys, let's uh, l l let's poll the audience real quick. I want to see um, yeses and nos. Uh, if tomorrow we were to live stream the whole day, just me and my boys playing Red Dead, would you guys tune in? It would probably be on Twitch. Probably not on YouTube. Um, what is my PS4 name? I can't remember. Oh, it's, uh, it's, um, uh, all right. Should I just say it? Is that safe? <laughs> okay. Um, my PS4 name, folks, is Easy Bake Andy, I believe. <laughs> uh, I don't get, I don't play online as often as I should. I really play, like, you know, single player games and RPGs and stuff like that. We're um, old guys. We're old guys, you know? We we're like for, stories. We're, we're RPGs, old. Okay. Yeah. We like we stories. Like a good story. We like platforms. We like love um, platformers. Love platformers. What's everybody's favorite platformer nowadays? What's something I should get into platform-wise? So, so is that an EZ? His... What? 
E Z like the letters no. E Z Bake Andy nope. or E Z Bake Andy no, all uh, words the, the the very all words very literal spelling of E Z Bake Andy because back at my old job my nickname was E Z Bake Andy because I kept baking for the office and bringing in like you know cinnamon rolls and Oreo truffles and stuff like that and so for my birthday they got me an actual E Z Bake Oven and from that day on I was known only as Easy Bake Andy. Um, so I, that's the moniker that I've adapted for the PlayStation Network, which you can access oh now man. for $5.99 a month. Okay. We are getting some great platformer recommendations. Uh, yeah. Hollow Knight, Cuphead, Celeste. These are all oh, like Cuphead. indie games Cuphead I've seen. Cuphead looks yeah. way too hard. It's supposed to be way they too look so hard. hard. I don't have space in my heart for something like that. <clears throat> <clears throat> Pardon me. Just getting over a cold here, folks. I apologize if there's a couple throat clears. Uh, so now that we got the, <clears throat> we're onto the apple now. Uh, we're trying to cut this into comparably sized pieces, and we don't want equal parts apple and sweet potato. Uh, really, the apple is just there to bring some sort of, you know, some more fall flavor. Apples and sweet potatoes work together really well, but we don't want this to be, you know, like an an apple and sweet potato. We want it to be sweet potato with apple. Um, and yeah, this is just to bring a little bit of, a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of tartness. Um, so really not sweetness. This is bring this is to bring a little bit of tartness. Um, and uh, tonight I'm gonna try things a little bit differently uh, than I did on the in the episode. In the episode, I just did whiskey and um, and uh, what was it? Chicken stock and lemon juice. And tonight I'm gonna try adding a little bit of maple syrup. And uh, I can't remember was it Tattoo Dad. Uh, you were talking about some experimenting and branching out in the kitchen. That is so important, and that's what I'm going to do tonight. And worst case scenario, you got something that you're like, eh, that's not that good. <laughs> and there are far worse things in life, I promise, <clears throat> than that. So it's worth trying because you might stumble across like, wow, that tastes really good. And when you do, that's, that's, that's a, a sen a, there's a sense of accomplishment there that just is unmatched in the kitchen world, that's, that's what you're trying to do always, is come across that like wow moment, that aha moment. Um, all right, so I'm just emptying out my, my garbage bowl here. And then we're going to prep the chicken thighs, which I have in the fridge, I'll grab those now. Um, let's scoop these over here. Oh, you know what I also didn't do on the live stream is I didn't add any onion. And I was regretting that wholeheartedly. I think that onion is going to bring a lot to this. Um, I added chives at the end to kind of uh, compensate for it, but um, I really think that uh, onion is going to bring some of the savory, some of the savory flavors that it was really missing. Um, so I'm going to be sure to add a small chopped onion. Jake, what we got? What we got going on over there? We got a recommendation from DJ Sintik and a $20 gift. Golly, oh hey, man. thank you, dude. Um, he asked if you would make brain dishes from the TV show iZombie for I Halloween. Zombie. Yeah, I have. Oh, that's a good idea for a Halloween episode. I didn't think about that. Uh, that's a great idea, DJ. What was it? DJ something. DJ Sintik. DJ Syndic. Uh, that is a really good idea. I've, I've, I, people have suggested that before. I've never seen iZombie personally, so I wanted to sort of watch it and get some research done, but Halloween is bearing down on us like a, like a freight train. Um, I can tell you guys that this, uh, uh, what the subject of the next episode is going to be. It is a Crunchyroll sponsored episode, so it is going to have food from anime. Um, and this is another thing we should ask you guys your opinion on because there's a few anime, there's a, there's a few anime series that feature this dish, and I guess I want to hear which one you guys are, would be most excited about. Uh, and that dish is uh, tako, takoyaki, uh, which is um, a Japanese street food. It's a um, it's a it, it's a a fried squid ball or octopus ball. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a dough very similar to an okonomiyaki dough or not dough batter, uh, without the cabbage. And then they add 
um, some vegetables and some squid and some pickled ginger. And then they fry them into little balls using a special pan. And uh, they just look delightful. Then they top them with, with some, some of the same accoutrements, some, some, um, some uh, what's it called, uh, adonori, I believe it's called, which is like the, the seaweed powder and some of that Japanese mayo that's so great, the like slightly thinner, sweeter mayo. Um, all right, so we got a nice onion chopped up here. Last thing to do is prep and season our chicken thighs. So let us do that. Let me grab a plate. Oop, pardon the noise. Grab a plate here. And I'm going to get my thighs out on here. These are from Dean and DeLuca, so they're all wrapped up like a present. It's the least they can do, the amount they're charging you over there. Um, I'm seeing a, so a lot of recommendations are... for Food Wars, uh, but what food do do from takoyaki? that episode? Yeah. yeah th there's food in every episode, right? So what's the best? Yeah, which, which food do you guys want to see? And please, uh, please don't say, <laughs> I mean, I know you're going to say it, but just know that I'm not going to do it is uh, the gotcha pork roast, because I don't think it's possible to make a pork roast from potato and bacon that tastes like a proper, pork, like a juicy, you know, meat dish, uh, as described in that scene. So I'm not super, you know, maybe if I get a couple of practice runs in, if I get a couple of practice runs in, I could potentially give a shot one day, but I'm not super keen on it right now. Um, Oh, geez, I forgot I'm out of kosher salt. Can you believe it, guys? Of all the people in the world, would you imagine, ever imagine that I am out of kosher salt? Somebody sound the alarm. Uh, so I've got some, some, um, some coarse sea salt here, which for purposes of seasoning our birds is going to be just fine. It's going to be a little bit... I'm trying to go a little sparing because these are, these are really big crystals of salt. Really big. Um... But I just want to get a nice dusting on there. There we go. And then some freshly ground pepper. That you won't ever catch me without. Are people freaking out about the fact that I'm out of kosher salt? Because I know it's out of character. All right. Pressing the seasoning into the skin. Just a little bit. Uh, ideally, we'd want to, like, air dry these when you salt and air dry chicken, chicken skin in particular, not only does it deeply season the chicken, but also it desiccates the skin, makes it drier, and therefore helps it crisp up a bunch more. Uh, you almost ready to go to camera two, dude? All right, just wanted to give you the heads up. We are heading over to camera two right now. Here we go, folks. Follow me. Welcome to camera two. We're over at the stove cam. For those of you who aren't familiar with the stove cam, my apologies for, for if that was jarring. Looks like we're a little out of focus here. I'm gonna, there we go. All right, cool, cool, cool. So uh, what we're gonna do now is, the objective here is to um, uh, brown and crisp up our chicken skin as much as possible. And for that, we need a slightly higher smoke point oil which is around here, here we go. Uh, here, you know, I buy the stove normally right over here where I have access to it. Uh, I keep a little bit of vegetable oil and this is a high enough smoke point oil that it's not going to, it's still gonna smoke up, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna go, go crazy. Um, <clears throat> so now I need torch, there we go. And we're gonna get this guy nice and hot. Let's get the flame going there. And uh, get excited because I'm going to flambe tonight, folks. You're going to see some flames flying later on uh, once we get uh, the, the, the potato, the sweet potatoes and apples and onions all up in here. Uh, I'm going to add some bourbon and then we're going to flame it off and it's going to look, it's going to look super cool. How many viewers we got going? Oh, shit. We're up uh, 1,000 viewers, 6,600. Thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out and cooking with me tonight. Who is cooking along tonight? Who's making some, some, some uh, easy weeknight meals? I know uh, it's really only dinner time for us here on the East Coast. What time is it right now? It's, it's, it's not even 5.30. Uh, so it's really more like my parents' dinner time. Um, the, 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 so hopefully, uh, 
If you guys aren't cooking along right now, what you can do is you can tune in to live stream. The live streams are saved on YouTube. You can tune in anytime, cook along live with me. And uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I, I, I know I said that we're gonna be able to finish these in 45 minutes flat, but um, you know, talking, it uh, takes, up, takes up time. So now we didn't load this up too much with oil. The scary thing with stainless for new cooks is that things stick to it. But that's what we want. We want the chicken to stick to it. When I drop this down on there, tss, it's going to immediately stick. And if I try to pull it up, it's like glued to the surface of the pan. But that's exactly what we want. Um, basically, as the skin cooks and as the fat renders out and as it crisps up, it's going to lift off the pan of its own volition and um, it's also going to release a whole lot of fat into this pan. So we just put a little bit of vegetable oil in here, but by the time we're done frying these up, this is gonna be swimming in fat uh, because all the fat is gonna render out of the skin, um, which is what we want. Like, you know, too much fat in your skin, that, you know, that, that can't be good. Um, it's very hard for me to gauge the temperature of the pan nowadays because these burners are so hot, that there's heat just flooding up around the side of the pan. Makes it very difficult for me to gauge. I think we're pretty much ready to go here. I want this practically smoking. So I'm going to get down here and take a look. Sorry for putting my face all up in your business. Oh, okay. I see a little bit of smoke. That's exactly what I want. My air conditioner just kicked on, so I must be doing my job right. Make sure that's spread around. And then let's drop these in. Let's, let, it, it, we know we did our job right if we hear a nice, aggressive sizzle. Just like that. go. These are nice small chicken thighs, so this, this meal, you know, you could do this with probably up to six chicken thighs in here. In this pan, that is, with a bigger pan, you could do even more. You could feed a family of four, no problem. But this is probably enough to feed a family of four. These chicken thighs are a little small. If you wanted to, to feed, you know, your spouse and your two kids, you'd probably want to get slightly bigger ones. This, one, this is going to be perfect for Sawyer and me. Sawyer and I, sorry. Um, sorry folks, just getting the dishes out the way. And uh, yeah, we are, we're, we're, we're putting these down and we are not touching them for as long as, as emotionally possible. Uh, I'm gonna grab some metal tongs here because, uh, now these I'm betting, see they're stuck. They're not moving. If I pulled that off, I'd tear the skin, a whole bunch of it would be stuck to the bottom of the pan. This guy's stuck, so. We just let them sit probably for another two more minutes. They're going to lift right off the pan. They're gonna, I, I, what I'm going to do is in two minutes, I'm going to take the pan and I'm going to slide it around like that. And you're going to see them slip around like they're on ice because they're going to have lifted off no problem. I hope because I'm talking a big game right now. And, uh, and I do hope that I live up to expectations here. Mm. I need to preheat my oven. We're preheating our oven to about 375 because uh, once we get the whole affair assembled here, because again, we're not trying to cook these chicken thighs through. We're just trying to get the skin nice and crisp and just get, get, get the outside, get some, get some texture and some color and some flavor on the outside. Uh, and then we are par cooking our vegetables a little bit until the vegetables and the chicken are both at a point where if we put them in the oven, they're gonna finish cooking at the same time. So we're just barely touching the chicken with heat, just enough to, 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 to get the outside going. We're gonna cook the vegetables a little bit longer just to, to get the cooking process going so they can focus more on browning a little bit in the oven. That's hot. I did wash my hands. I'll do, I'll do it again. I'll wash my hands. I don't know if you guys can hear it over the sizzling, but the sink's running right now. I'll do it again. But don't worry, I washed my hands. I would always wash my hands after, after handling chicken. I'm not trying to get salmonella up in here. There we go. Double washed, no problem. Let's see here. Has it been two minutes? I'm gonna give it another Oh, I mean, those are practically ready to go, but I'm gonna, just, just to make sure that my point is proven, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give those another few few seconds here, maybe another 30 seconds. Uh, over here, I got my bourbon ready to go, so I can 
toss that in there when it comes time to flambe. Flambe doesn't actually really do anything. They did a study on it and uh, you know, did some blind taste tests and discovered that it makes really no difference. It helps cook off the alcohol and it's very showy, it's very cool looking, but it's, um, it doesn't really make that much of a difference in flavor. So first off, only do it if you know what you're doing. And if you have a fire extinguisher at the immediate ready, and second off, um, you don't have to do it because uh, it's, 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 it's not totally necessary. All right, so I think these guys are ready to skate around. Here we go. Oh, look at that. See that? It's like they're on ice. They were stuck there a minute ago. And now not only do, oh, yeah. Not only do we have gorgeously crisp skin. Ooh. Yeah, look at that. Oh, you can, uh, I, I wish you guys could smell this. I'm sorry. But like, this is nothing but chicken, salt, and pepper. And just the, the smell of like cooking it properly and getting that, getting all that fat rendered out, ow. <laughs> um, and you, God, that skin is like glassy. You can see all these bubbles and pock marks in it. It's ready to go. So now we're just heating, we're just giving the bottom just a little bit more color, nothing major. I'm gonna turn down the flame because it's really spitting oil at me right now. Um, the oven's preheating to about 375. It's spitting oil all over the place, so I'm just gonna wipe this up a little bit. And then uh, we're getting ready to cook our vegetables as soon as we remove these from the heat. I'm gonna put them on this plate. They're gonna, they're gonna leak a lot of juices onto this plate. They're gonna be swimming in a little bit of juice. Save that, because that's pure chicken flavor. So, so once we put these back in, we're gonna dump the, the chicken liquid in. And we're gonna we're gonna have ourselves a merry Christmas. Uh, these well, a little bit more color in these. See, they're just they're not they're not really fully colored yet. I, I, I want I want some some nice browning on the bottom. So I'm just gonna have a nice sip of my Dalmore. And you know what? I'm gonna try it without an ice cube now. Let me try it without an, without a cube. Maybe the cube ruined it. Maybe that guy was right that made fun of me. Maybe they're all right. And I've always been wrong. There we go. It's a nice cold glass though, so maybe that'll have some kind of effect. All right, cheers guys. Let's see what this is like. Oh. Oh my. That's way better without ice. I'm almost wondering if that ice was like had like freezer funk to it or something because that is way better without ice. I take back everything I said about this. Wow. Mmm. It's very sweet. It's just subtly oaky. That weird sort of fruity sensation that I was having is gone. Alright, I think this is good enough. See we got some color going on there. It doesn't really matter as much on the bottom because the bottom is just exposed meat. So the more we cook that, the tougher it's gonna get. But the top is protected by the skin. So we can really blast that with the heat, get the skin nice and crisp, and we won't affect the meat too much. Now look at what we got here, folks. We got us some fond. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drain off a bit of this fat because there's a bit too much in there. I just want like a tablespoon remaining. Uh, I'm also going to wipe off the side of the pot because it's got fat going down it and I don't want that to catch on fire. You know what I mean? So there we go, back on the heat. And I'm going to start with my onions. Here we go, we got my onions over here. We're bringing them over here and into the pan they go and there's a little bit of reserved chicken fat and oil. And we got that nice fawn in the bottom of the pot. I'm going to get a wooden spoon. That seems like the most appropriate tool for this application. I need new wooden spoons, dude. Real bad. I guess I'll use one of these. There we go. This guy's all burnt up from, from making gumbo. You know, this guy's been stirring, uh, um, what's it called, uh, 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 roux, that, that roux that you have to cook for like 45 minutes. So this just sits in hot oil and is, is just moving around in hot oil uh, um, for, you know, 45 minutes. So this, this, that's why this guy's all burned up. But 
I can smell the onions and I already know that like this was, this was something that I really should have added. It was a big mistake on my part not to add this. Uh, this is going to add the, the this is going to add this, the savory kind of flavor that the vegetables were missing. What I can't see the comments, Jake. What am, what am I missing over there? What's going on? Well, we're getting a lot of fond talk, a lot of rue talk. Oh, um, yeah. I got a couple questions for you. I've been waiting to tell you if you're ready for those. Hit me. What's your favorite brand of instant noodle? That's from Rum Ham. I mean. I grew up with Maruchan ramen. I believe that's what it's called, Maruchan. That's the one that they sell in all the, all the grocery stores in, here in the States, I, I believe. Uh, and that's what I grew up with. I was actually nicknamed the ramen master back in uh, high school. It's, tr <laughs> it's true. I, I can vouch for that. He can vouch for that because he we, was the ramen went master. high school together. And I was the, ramen, the ramen master, master. as dubbed by, by, by Zach Shumway. Um, I, I, I was dubbed the ramen master because I was able to cook it uh, just right, <laughs> which really uh, there, there, is no, there is no ramen master when it comes to Maruchan ramen. But uh, that, that is my, it's my favorite instant ramen because it's the only one I've ever had. Not the one in the cup. I don't like the one in the cup. Uh, it bothers me. I think that the noodles don't come out as good. Um, the vegetables are kind of like squeaky and, and weird. Um, I just like the, I just like the stuff out of the package. That's, that's all I'm about. Um, so guys, we've been, we've been sauteing our onion a little bit here. You can see that it's becoming translucent, you know, just typical bog standard saute. So now I'm going to, I'm going to crank up the heat a little bit because they're, 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 they're not sizzling quite as much as I'd like. And I'm going to start adding our sweet potato and apple because we got our onions nice and sweated down. And uh, I might have prepped too much sweet potato here. So we're just going to add as much as we need and I'll save the rest for another application. But I am going to add all the apple because I want as much of that apple-y goodness. I definitely don't want as much as sweet potato again, but I, I do want a fair amount. Sorry, I'm over at the prep table here just picking out apples. Okay, thanks Jake. Jake's on the ball over there. And uh, sorry, that's, that's, that's Sawyer's nickname. That's who I'm referring to when I say Jake Sawyer. Um, for those of you who are new to our relationship, we have been friends since high school and have been lucky enough to go into business together, which has been a, a dream of ours since we were knee high to a duck. Is that a, a saying? I think it is. There we go. So we got... Uh, Got our apples and sweet potatoes in there. Let's see if I can toss this without spilling any. I'm totally gonna spill some. Oop. Just trying to get those onions off the bottom of the pan. Expose, uh, expose our apples and our sweet potatoes to a little bit more heat. And we're just gonna saute these until they just start to soften up. Maybe, maybe pick up a little bit of color. If we really push them down into a single layer like that and crank up the heat, we can get a little bit of color on the apples on sweet potatoes, and that might be nice. So that's what I'm going to shoot for right now. And there we go. And then uh, once once these once we get these guys to a good sort of preliminary uh, cooking phase, uh, once they've gotten a little bit of color and they've softened up just a little bit, we're going to deglaze with some uh, bourbon and some chicken stock. And then we're going to place, nestle our chicken sort of into the vegetables so the meat is down in the liquid, but the skin is sticking up, up top. And then we'll put it in the oven, letting it finish in the oven. Uh, and while we're doing that, we can start prepping the other meal, the, uh, the sheet pan meal. This one, this, is, this, this was made to stream, this, this episode. This skin on this chicken is so darned crispy. Like, it's like glass. It's, 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 it's stiff and... And I can just tell it's going to be so delicious. I want to grab a bite of it, but it's still like raw chicken. So I'm not going to do that. But I just cranked up the heat on this. And I'm, I don't know if you can hear it. I'm going to get nice and close so you can... Mike can pick up on it. Ooh, it's hot down here. I don't like it. Yeah, That's hot. I wonder if I singe my beard at all. Oh, my beard's so warm. Wow. Wow. My beard retains heat like a like cast iron. 
Gee whiz. Okay. Put the glasses on here. I'm going to be on the camera. i got to have the glasses on. What is that? Oh, that's the other headphone. It's supposed to be behind me. Okay. <laughs> Learning curve, folks. Learning curve. I'm going to go check. I'm going to come over here and check out the comments while this is picking up some color. Let's I got a see. few more ASMR. queued up for you. If you want to roll Oh, yeah. Hit me, Jake. What do we got? Um, all right. So we got a $10 donation from three emerald four archer. So I guess emerald archer that would be. Uh, Thank my favorite you, movie Archer. is No No Reservations. Could you cook Kate's quail and truffle dish? You ever heard of that? Yes, No Reservations is um, is uh, that uh, that old uh, what's her name? Um, the chick from uh, from from oh my god, <laughs> um, Catherine Zeta Jones. Uh, Catherine Zeta Jones and like um, Aaron. The guy from Batman who played Two Face on Batman, um, Aaron, uh, whatever his name is. Uh, I, I've not seen that movie. I'm gonna have to check it out. I assume that there's a lot of great food in it because it's all about a high-end chef, right? Um, I've also gotten some requests from the movie Burnt, uh, with uh, with um, I can't. I'm blanking on all names tonight. Um, God, he's in this the 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 great new movie, A Star Is Born. It's um. Oh, Bradley Cooper. Jeez, thank you, Jake. Um, I don't know. It's, I'm 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 off my game tonight, folks. Sorry. Uh, yeah, the Burnt with Bradley Cooper is another popular one. So uh, definitely gonna be making something from one of those in in the future. What else we got going on over there? Okay, we got Tegex T E H G E X recommended hard Jake, can, candy. Can you can you switch yep. the camera to? Uh... Oh yeah, sorry. Um, uh, we have. Um, TegX asking to do hard and soft candy and candy apples from Hocus Pocus. That's a good idea. Oh, that's a really good Halloween idea right there. It's a shame that the next uh, episode, it's got, it's got to be from anime, and that's going to be the day before Halloween, no? Oh, Shit. yeah. That's unfortunate. All right, well, it's in the repertoire. That's a good, good suggestion. Uh, we got yeah. a five-pound question from Louis C., what up, baby? See, Serious you. question, Brad or Vinny? <laughs> I'm not answering that question. I don't care how serious it is. I'm not answering that question. They're both my brothers, and, I, and they're not happy. I will carry them. What? Uh, the, I, I, I would never choose between the two. I could never choose between the two. In my mind, they're the same person. Yeah, it's really uh, impossible. So, yeah. Um, Why don't you ask me gotta, to choose my favorite child? Yeah. We're going um, back over to the stove, Jake. Just FYI. Got it. I got a 20 euro question from Alex Rosing. Really appreciate that. Thank you, Alex. Um, they want to know what watch you're wearing. Oh, tonight's uh, wearing uh, a, um, a Rolex uh, Datejust from 1981, circa 1981. Uh, it's, I, I, I got it in a, in a foreclosure auction or police auction of some kind. Um, so I got it for steel, and, and it's, it's just so unique. It's so interesting looking. It's got a... A stainless case with a gold um, bezel and a and a, and a, a, a robin's egg blue face. It's just a very unique looking watch. So I'm 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 recently getting into fine timepieces. I'm gonna turn this down a little bit here. That's hot. Um, but you might be able to see here. We picked up some color by letting everybody sit on the bottom of the pot. We picked up some nice color. I don't know if you can see that, but we got a little bit of browning on some of these pieces. So now the objective is, now that we got some color, the objective is to start cooking these guys through a little bit because we, we want them to be sort of par cooks before we put them in the oven. And then we got all this great fawn on the bottom of the pot here that we're going to deglaze in a moment with uh, bourbon and chicken stock. And that's going to be exciting because we're going to get to see some fire. How about that, folks? Um, but uh, yeah, recently gotten into 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 fine uh, timepieces and watches and and uh, vintage old old Rolexes are very cool, very interesting. Um, I'm seeing that these 
Yeah, the apples are starting to soften up. So is, so is the, 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 uh, the sweet potato. So I think, I think we're going to be good to deglaze now. So I'm going to crank up the heat. I want this pan nice and hot because we want the alcohol to aerosolize. So it's, uh, it, it, it comes off as vapor from the, t from the top of the pan. And then we can set that vapor on fire. So buckle your seatbelts, folks. So I'm going to get this nice and hot. There it goes. Now I'm going to, off the flame, add some bourbon. About a half cup there. And then put it on the heat. Once we feel like we've cooked off a bit of the alcohol, get that flame nice and high. And go ahead and there we go. Some nice little flames. Again, not necessary, just fun. Um, I'm sure some, some chef in France would disagree with me. Got to get all that alcohol cooked off there, careful. Don't, don't like reach into this or look over it or anything because look, there's still flames shooting out. There's still fire going on there. I don't know if you can see it, but there's still flames. So I'm gonna extinguish those now by, there's still flames, look at that. I think the apples are on fire. We go ahead and extinguish that with a little bit of uh, chicken stock. There we go. There we go. We just want enough on the bottom. Oh, I forgot the sage, shoot. That's okay. We can add it now, it's still gonna be good. I'm gonna turn down the heat over here. Jake, we're gonna go back over to the prep table. And I'm going to grab some fresh sage out the fridge. It's already smelling pretty good, folks. Pretty, 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 pretty good. Um, I'm also going to add some maple syrup, I think. I think that's going to be a real nice addition. Where is my maple syrup? I know I have some. Uh, hang on a second, folks. I have to jump off camera real quick because I think it's over on this rack over here. Sorry for the coitus interruptus, if you will. Name it. Wet Hot American Summer. That's right. Um, all right, so we got some maple syrup here. We got some fresh sage. Too much. Don't want to go crazy, but like sage is pretty mild, pretty forgiving, so... It's, uh, it's not going to get too angry at us if we, um, if we add a bunch. So I'm going to just sort of line all these guys up like that. And then I'm going to cut them into manageable strips like so. This is just one of a million ways that you could cut sage. I'm just cutting them into strips. So now I can go like this. And now they are inappropriately small pieces. Let me get all this crap out of the way. It's important to keep, keep a clean, organized work area. and I'm not as good at that as I should be. So again, this, this the, the basics is really a show about learning together as a people, as one people united throughout the world. And that's what we need in these dark times is some unity. Um, so now we got some uh, fresh chopped sage over here bringing it over to the stovetop, and we're just dumping that right into the pot. Get whatever's left there. There we go. Let's uh, get that all incorporated there. I'm also going to get a little bit more chicken stock because it's looking a little low on liquid. And we want the liquid to sort of become a sauce by the end of this, so we don't want too much down there, but we want enough that we can nestle the chicken in there, and it's going to be you know, the meat's going to be submerged in the liquid. Um, I might treat this thing to a pat of butter at the end of cooking. That might be good. Um, and I'm also going to par season it a little bit. This is going to help the vegetables give up a little bit of their moisture. And it's just going to make it easier for us down the line. We're probably going to want to season it again uh, before we serve. But this just makes it a little easier. We obviously don't want to like season for taste at this point. Like I don't think I've seasoned enough at this point because uh, I can't taste it yet. It's not cooked. I mean, I could taste it, but it's just not ready. So it would be immaterial. All right. So I'm going to make uh, four kind of wells, almost like we're making a shakshuka. <coughs> 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 
part of me. <coughs> Sorry. Ooh, inhaled a little bit of smoke, or not smoke, whatever this is, steam. Um, all right, so we've got four kind of little divots there into which I'm going to deposit the chicken. There we go. Let me get them down in there. I know I didn't do this in the episode, and it's not totally necessary, but uh, submerging at least the bottom part of the chicken is going to um, help tenderize the meat a little bit, as long as that skin is exposed. Make sure that skin is not covered. That is what is most important at this stage of, uh, stage of cooking. I forgot to add the maple syrup. We can go ahead and add that afterwards when we plate up. I think that will be just fine. So here we go, folks. We got chicken nestled amongst our vegetables, and that is going into a 375 degree Fahrenheit oven that I forgot I have a pizza stone in. So that might accelerate cooking time a little bit. Give me one moment. I'm going to wash my hands. I forgot to dump my chicken juices in there as well. So that's my bad. But you know, again, we're, we're just, we're just experimenting here. We're just, we're just fucking around and having a good time. Don't matter. This is weeknight meals. This is a great time to experiment because like, you know, they're, the, the quick, easy meals aren't, aren't like the, generally my favorite meals require a lot of time. I'm not saying effort. I'm saying time uh, and not the spice. I'm not saying effort. I'm not saying the herb. I am saying literal time um, because I love stews. I love uh, soups and all those things require you to just sort of, you know, let flavors slowly develop and build and you know a lot there are obviously a lot of great quick meals out there pastas and steaks and 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 what we're making tonight but like you know the, the, these are where you want to you want to mess around like with boeuf bourguignon if you're dumping four hours into a dish you probably want to follow a recipe if you don't know what you're doing because uh you know if you screw it up then you wasted so much time but like we're just rocking a little 45 minute dinner here so might as well mess around a little bit have a little bit more delmore because this stuff is good mm. oh it's so much better jake you gotta try this without that ice so yeah i think better. i'm gonna come in and get myself a quick finger of it whenever you're ready dog jake's gonna come in and join me so we can uh have ourselves a little, a little snifter. Oh, he's dumping his ice. Okay. Yeah, that that was that was your favorite when we were shooting, right? The chicken, or was it the salmon? I wanted to see the bottle, so I show him that bottle. There we go, folks. Dalmore, fifteen. It's a fine single malt Scotch. Uh, Highland. Yeah. Cool. Mm. Um. So this meat definitely way better. I'm weirded out because I can hear my voice in my in my, yeah, in my earpiece from the. <laughs> here you go. Oh, here we can do that proper. Cheers. Thanks for thanks for helping out, Jake. Oh, yes. Okay. Looks like we got us some dirty potatoes here, folks. So I'm gonna oh, give we these. Got a, one of the mods from the subreddit sent a big super chat. Hey, what up? What up? What up? Thank you. Oh, all right. Let's see here. Oh, I know you, man. Flip Mazad or, or whatever you are on Reddit. I, I know you. You're one of the earliest and the greatest and, and the finest, dude. Thank you so much for all your hard work on the subreddit. Um, some great BWV discussion, some awesome Babish memes. Uh, from one Andrew to another, keep the great keep up the great live streams. Thank you so much, dude. And guys, if you're Redditors or if you're you know want to check out Reddit, a great place to start or a great place to end up is um, the binging with Babish sub subreddit that's at reddit.com slash r or backslash backslash r backslash binging with Babish. And it's a uh, forum for discussion and and sharing of, uh, you know, recreations from the show or questions that you might have. I'm always in there poking around, saying hi. And um, my man, Andrew, over here, who just helped us out with a, uh, 
the $20 super chat. Thank you so much for that. It's very, very generous. You didn't have to do that because you're already so generous with your time working as a mod uh, on the subreddit, but thank you. Um, he is one of the admins over there and he's one of the people who makes sure that it's a, uh, a friendly and beautiful little corner of the internet. So if you are a fan of the show, if you are a fan of cooking, come hang out and I will see you there. Thanks again, Andrew. Appreciate it. From one Andrew to another. I'm going to rinse these potatoes, folks, because they're looking a little dirty. Um, and they're also a little bit bigger than I'd like for them to be, but that's all that they had at the store. So we're probably going to quarter these. I know on the, on the episode quick, I did uh, these in halves. Quick chat, quick chat moderation note. I'm going to move us into slow mode because uh, a couple people in here are getting a little chippy trying to... Uh, trying to make it so we can't chat, you know? They're just spamming. Uh, we got, so we got some rabble rousers. Well, yeah, we got some rabble rousers. So we're going to try and slow them down. Our apologies to everyone out there who's just trying to get some cooking tips and have a nice time. We're working on yeah, it. We're going to try and uh, put them down a notch. Sorry, we got we got to put on slow mode, but some people want to want to mess around and, you know, it's the internet. That's okay. That's what's going to happen. And I'm sorry that you guys have to pay the price. Um, but thank you very much for sticking with us. 6,334 people. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. <coughs> Sorry for coughing. <clears throat> and uh, here we go. We got some nice potatoes, nice all clean. I was so, um, I wanted to get these, these potatoes so bad because look at this, they're called buttercream potatoes. Organic buttercream, uh, um, probably Yukon Golds of some kind. So I'm expecting these to taste like dessert. I'm kidding, they won't do that, but they'll probably be nice and soft and creamy and whatnot, I hope, with a name like buttercream. Otherwise, somebody's doing some real false advertising, which I would not appreciate. Okay, we got these uh, potatoes all rinsed up. And uh, let me think, any other prep that we need to do? So the, the basic, um, basically, if we get down to basics, sorry. Um, oh, uh, the, 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 the basic order of events that's gonna go on here is that the potatoes need to cook for about 35, 40 minutes. And the salmon and the asparagus need to cook for about 15. So we're going to start the potatoes first um, on a preheated sheet pan. So I've got an aluminum, aluminum uh, uh, rimmed baking sheet here. Uh, this is the, you know, this can be the foundation for a great many dinners. And all you have to really do is think, like, how do I best want to time this? Uh, potatoes take 40 minutes or so to cook. Asparagus takes 15. Salmon takes about 12 to 15. So what do you do? You put the potatoes in the, in the oven first for 20 minutes. Then you take it out. You add, the, other, you add the, the salmon and the asparagus. Then you put it back in. Then everybody's done it at the same time. Voila. You can do this with virtually, not anything, but you can do this with lots and lots of things. You could do it with chicken, you could do it with turkey, you could do it with tofu for all I care. Oh my God, who's here right now? All right, well, who's here? We, we I'll, go here, I'll go get it, I'll go get it, I'll go get it, I'll go get it. Okay, all right, all right, Jake's gonna get it. We, 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 I don't know if you guys could hear that, but my doorbell just went off, which means that uh, we have us a visitor, an, un, an unannounced, unscheduled visitor. Um, We'll see who this is. It's not the laundry guy for any of any old uh, legacy streamers that might remember the legacy of the laundryman. And, you know, I might do these in halves. You know, I was talking about about uh, doing these in quarters because they're so big, but you know, they're so narrow. Like they're 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 tall, but they're narrow. So once you cut them in half, these are small enough to cook, even though they're large potatoes on their own. Did you check the intercom? Well, but, but you, did you buzz them in? Yes. Why? <laughs> Why didn't you ask who they were? Because we're It could be a murderer. Because we're live. Just because we're live? We're making a TV show. Oh, you're an anarchist. All right. So we just let a stranger into the building. Um, so I'll say a little prayer for all of us, I guess. You know, maybe I'll do, just so they're more bite-sized. I can't decide if I want to have these be big old hunks of potato that you can cut up with, with a fork and knife yourself. I think I want them to be bite-sized. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna quarter these like so, and that way they still have a ton of surface area. 
What I'm most concerned about is surface area to pick up browning, and we want a big old piece of the potato to have unfettered access to the bottom of the sheet pan, which again, I need to preheat. This guy's going in the nice hot oven, so when we take it out, it's gonna be nice and hot. We're gonna be able to dump the, the oil tossed potatoes on there, and they're gonna start sizzling and start picking up color immediately. I'm gonna check on our chicken as well. Looking like chicken. Okay, smelling good. I'm feeling encouraged about that smell. I really think the onions are gonna make a huge difference. <clears throat> The ones that I made in the episode were lacking that savory onion flavor, which is why I added the, uh, the chives, and that definitely helped. But I think adding straight up onions to the, um, to, to, to the, to the original uh, uh, mixture is, is just going to make all the difference in the world. All right, so yeah, these are maybe not bite-sized, but you can pick it up with a fork and bite it in half and then finish it off. Um, so I think this is a better way to go. And we're just slicing these guys up. Then we're going to toss them with oil. Oh, no, wrong way. I'm not thinking clearly right now. Got to go that way. There we go. I want nice flat pieces so there's lots and lots of surface area to pick up good browning. Feel me. There we go. Last one. This was one of the first things that I really learned how to cook, especially in college, was just roasted potatoes with herbs and garlic, which uh, I've you know, learned now that uh, if you toss these guys with fresh garlic, the garlic's going to burn well before the potatoes are done. What you might want to do, which I've been enjoying doing in my, in my free time, is um, roasting the potatoes, getting them all cooked, and then once they're done, tossing them with a, with a quick vinaigrette of lemon juice, uh, Maybe vinegar if you're feeling frisky, but mostly lemon juice, olive oil, and garlic. Or, uh, butter if you're feeling frisky. Again, uh, you know you can you can you can change that up. Maybe some fresh parsley, um, and uh, and toss that with the hot potatoes. They don't lose much of their crispness. They do lose a little bit for sure, but uh, they they gain a, a whole lot of flavor. And the heat from the potatoes just wakes up the raw garlic and the. Um, the uh, 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 lemon juice and it just it just wakes everybody up and it's, it's just a great time. Um, so all right, we got these guys cut up. Let's prep our asparagus. That's the next thing that we can do. Now I did something on the show that I'm not super proud of, which is that I did what an ex girlfriend taught me to do, which is to take your asparagus, find the point that it, like bend it and find the point at which it naturally snaps. Like that, and uh, and that's the best part. And this whole part would be woody and tough if you tried to cook it, but it's just not true. Um, it will snap depending on wherever you hold it. Like, you know, if I hold it at each t at each end at the at the tips, guess where it's going to break? Right in the middle. If I hold it down here and I bend it, guess where it's going to break? Right in the middle. Like, you know. Look at the difference here. I, I really, really doubt that this piece of asparagus was fresher here and this one here. Um, so do us all a favor and, and just cut your asparagus because uh, I actually, no, I'm sorry. I think there is legitimacy to that. I think you end up with less tough ends if you break it instead of cut it. So instead of like, you know, bending and trying to find the natural breaking point, just find like, you know, right there. That's a good place. We want to lose probably a solid inch off the stump, depending on the size of that particular piece of asparagus. I might cut these in half too, so they cook a little bit quicker. Because um, I like really crispy, uh, not burnt, but you know, blackened asparagus. Nice, nice little dark bits all over it. That's what I like the most. And I'm going to achieve it by, I think I'm gonna, well, maybe not. If this was really thick asparagus, you know how sometimes at the store you get asparagus that's like out of control thick. I might have it, but this is pretty average. So might as well just keep it where it's at. I feel like we're a little light on asparagus here. If you were feeding a family of four, this might be kind of kind of paltry. Um, but, you know. All right, so now it's time to wash this quick. I'm going to just give these guys a little rinse. Pardon me. Pardon the interruption. 
little rinsey rinse on the asparagus. You don't want to pick up any dirt or or you know tainted soil. I don't know. But you know, if you ever if you ever make asparagus or zucchini or something like that and you didn't you didn't rinse it, uh, that's a lesson you'll never forget. Is like, oh, grainy zucchini. That's awesome. Uh, that's a lesson I learned back in college. I was obsessed with just like making zucchini just sauteed with garlic. And um, one time I made it for my then girlfriend and uh, wow, what a disaster. Um, this is a boring story. I'm just grabbing paper towels right now real quick just so I can properly dry these guys off. Un moment. There we go. Because we want these nice and nice and dry. We're going to let them air. We, we, there's plenty of time for them to air dry because these potatoes have to bake for a solid 20 minutes before, before these uh, even approach the oven. But one nice and dry so they, they experience the Maillard reaction and become browned. And yeah, I guess it wouldn't hurt for them to be a little, now that I'm thinking about it, it probably wouldn't hurt for them to be a little moist because that would, might like help them steam uh, all on their own a little bit or something. I don't know. Probably would be just fine. I think uh, that's the beauty of these things. Like the, you know, with, with, with the cinnamon rolls, with baking, little subtleties can ruin the whole thing. Not packing them in the, uh, not arranging them in your baking dish properly can ruin their size and appearance. Not frosting them at the right juncture can ruin their appearance and and um, just not make the the frosting drape over the sides the way that you want them to. Uh, overproofing, underproofing, all these little, seemingly little things can make or break it. Uh, when it comes to cooking, obviously there's, depending on the dish, but especially with dishes like this, there's a lot more wiggle room. And, you know, if, if your asparagus isn't dry, if you're in a rush and you're like, oh, I forgot to wash my asparagus, and you washed it and dumped it straight on the dish, it's probably still gonna be fine, so just relax. Um, anyway. <laughs> I'm on a rant. We got two new members. We got Ty Taylor Williamson, thank you so much, and Sam Zapiro. Z Zapiro, thank you very much for becoming members. Again, for anybody who is new to the party, memberships are a new feature on YouTube wherein you can pay $5 a month for access to exclusive content like behind the scenes footage, exclusive episodes, bloopers. Uh, you can have access to special emojis and badges. Uh, you can have access to a special Discord server where I'll be popping in from time to time and we can chat. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a cool, it's a cool new feature, so check it out. I encourage you to check it out. Now, um, I'm going to do a quick temperature check on a chicken because it's been in there for probably, you know, 10... What, 20, 15 minutes probably? And uh, I, it's not going to be done, but I just want to see where it's at. I want to see how much further we have to go because I'm not timing this here. I'm just going by doneness. There we go. All right, let's take a poke here. What do we got? Oop. Oh, wow. They're further along than I thought. We're at about 150 degrees. I guess because they're so small. I'm gonna check another one here. You want to get into the thickest part of the of the thigh, right by the bone. I'm I'm getting between 150 to 160 there, so we're actually way closer than I thought. I'm shooting for at least 175. The beauty of uh, of of um, chicken thighs is that it's very very difficult to overcook them. Um, I honestly think like you know the recommended cooking temperature is 175. I really think 185 is where they really come to life. Um, I don't think there's that much juice loss. And, um, and uh, they're so tender and they're so, ju I, I really think that that's the best place to be. So we got, you know, 15, tw uh, 25, 15 to 25 degrees left to go. And then we will hit uh, the oven with our potatoes. Sound good? We got new members. We got, uh, we got a $5 super chat. Hey man, love the vids. Uh, Onyx34A says, hey man, love the vids. My, um, Love cooking myself. Just wondering what knives you use. Well, I use a wide variety of knives. Um, I have my cheap, oh, it's not even up here. For, you know, for when I need a, a real knock around knife, I got a, a you know, <clears throat> a Dexter. This is like a, a, um, a restaurant supply store kind of knife. It's like 15, 20 bucks. 
and it's a workhorse. It's, you know, it's not the sharpest knife in the world. It's not the sturdiest knife in the world, but for a little bit of money, it, it'll get the job done. That's my, you know, really beat it up kind of knife. Then this is an excellent entry level knife that I recommend to all burgeoning uh, home chefs. It's the Vostov Pro line. I'm a big fan of Vostov knives. I have uh, myself, this is my fa uh, one of my favorite chef's knives. It's uh, the Vostov Icon um, Classic. Classic Icon, eight inch chef's knife. It's one of my favorites. And they, but this is very, very expensive. It's around $150. Uh, and they recently came out with the Pro line, which this guy retails for about 20, 20 bucks. And it's great for learning and, um, and uh, burgeoning chefs because it's got this awesome grip. And I'm not sponsored by Vostov, folks. I'm just telling you for the facts here. It's got this awesome grip that is angled at exactly where you want to be when you're holding the knife. This is right where you want to be. You want to have your finger wrapped around sort of the side of the blade like that. You want your thumb gripping on the other side, finger wrapped around, thumb gripping. And this gives you a, a tremendous amount of control over the knife. And it helps, the, just the shape of the handle helps train you to hold it exactly the right way because you'll notice when I use my knife, look what I'm doing. I've got my finger wrapped around the, front, the, the side of the blade and I've got my thumb gripping on the other side. This gives me the most control over my knife and uh, it, it just sort of knocks it into your brain. And most recently, let's put these back. Most recently I invested in a, in a Shun, uh, I think this is a Shun Classic. What is this? So, so yeah, it's a, oh, cl yeah, classic, classic Western uh, chef cook's knife, eight inch um, Damascus. It's again an expensive knife, but it's it's it'll last you for life, and it's it's a really beautiful thing. It's covered in potato right now, so it's kind of gross, but you can see the Damascus pattern in the steel, that sort of um, scalloping in the steel, uh, really lovely. Um, thank you very much for your question, and for for thank you. We got a couple new members here. Thank you guys. Uh, Kyle Eldridge, what's your go-to whiskey to cook with? Well, I'm cooking with Bullet right now because I'm not crazy about Bullet for drinking. Um, with cooking, you can go pretty cheap. You can go Evan Williams, you can go you know, Four Roses. Go with the bargain stuff because once it's cooked down, it's going to taste pretty good. And uh, you, don't, you don't, definitely don't use the good stuff. I would never use the Dalmore 15, if that's what you're asking, uh, for cooking, ever. Um, it's, it's meant for drinking. It's not meant for cooking. Um, I do think that there's value in using semi-good whiskey, wine, um, spirits for cooking. Uh, I, I, I think that um, <laughs> I would never use like the ultra cheap stuff, like the stuff that comes in a plastic bottle and, you know, is just called whiskey or something like that. I, I probably wouldn't cook with that because it's probably going to have some off flavors and it's not going to be pleasant. Um, but, uh, you know, a $20 bottle of whiskey, that's, that's the sweet, sweet spot right there. Just like, you know, not, not super cheap, but not like super nice. Just something that you might make a cocktail out of or whatever, something good for mixing. That's, that's right where bullet sits. Bullets, bullet sits right in that, in that range. This is, you know, a tremendously popular whiskey right now, but I have it on good authority that it's like a blend. And I don't know if this is true. But I, I, I heard from somebody who's in the biz that this is a, a blend that is actually used in a whole lot of other commercially available whiskeys, and it's not unique or interesting in, in any way. And, you know, you can tell by tasting it. It just tastes like straight-up bourbon, which is fine. Yeah, it tastes as bourbon as the day is long. And um, it's pretty good. It's good. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm not knocking bullet. It's perfect for cocktails. Perfect for, you know, an old fashioned, maybe not old fashioned, but like, you know, any kind of bourbon cocktail, uh, uh, that's the way you want to go. Um, long answer to your question. Henry Velasquez, $5, thank you so much. Who inspired you to cook or did you inherit it on your own? My mom first taught me some of the most basic elements of cookery, particularly baking. She taught me how to make, you know, Nestle Toll House cookies and all that stuff when I was a kid and grilled cheese and... She used to, um, in the winter, she would go out and grab a Tupperware full of snow and she would pour maple syrup over the snow, which I understand now is actually kind of a 
tradition in, in some parts of Canada, but um, this was unheard of in my sleepy little town of Rochester, New York. And uh, yeah, that, that was a lovely little dessert that she used to make me and my brother. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's where it all kind of started. Um, I'm gonna check in on the chicken real quick. Let's, uh, let's pop over to the stove here. Let's see where we're at. Last we checked, we were around 155, 160. I'm poking right into the thickest part of the... All right, 173. I'm gonna check two of them just to be safe. Ow, that's hot. I touched the, the sheet pan, that was smart. 171, all right, so we got like, I wanna go to 180, that's, that's where I wanna be. It's not about a food safety thing, it's about the fact that um, chicken thighs are very rich in fat and collagen connective tissue and they need higher temperatures to break down than white meat. You don't wanna go above 155 on white meat. Um, I usually cook to 150, sometimes even 145 if I'm very sure that my chicken is from a, a good reputable source and it's not gonna make me sick. Um, d d d chicken breast dries out in a heartbeat, but you know, chicken thighs, you can braise them to death, you can do most anything to them and uh, they're, they're still gonna be pretty delicious. Um, we got, let's see. Okay, thank you very much Super Chatters and new members. Thank you to the 6,100 people watching right now. Really appreciate you guys coming and hanging out. We're making some basic uh, weeknight meals right now. What we have in the oven, for those of you just joining us, we have some uh, crispy chicken thighs with um, sweet potatoes, apples, uh, bourbon, and sage, fresh sage, uh, which is a lovely little weeknight meal that you can whip together like that. And uh, what we're prepping for here, and we need the oven for it, so that's why we're waiting for the chicken to finish cooking, uh, is a sheet, sheet pan dinner, which is just making your whole dinner, all three, you know, protein, starch, vegetable, all on one sheet pan. And um, it's, uh, it's a very easy and uh, uh, dish-wise, uh, very, very easy, because all your, the re really, your only thing, the only things you're making dirty are your knife and a sheet pan. So, I mean, how much easier can cleanup possibly be? And dishes that you eat on, that's about it. Uh, and we're gonna make a very simple vinaigrette for the top of the salmon out of mustard and, um, and uh, what else is going on there? Mustard and olive oil and um, lemon juice and parsley, just like very super simple, but very flavorful, just, just something to wake up that salmon. Uh, roast salmon on its own is actually really nice. I like it with just salt and pepper, but then you throw a little vin vinaigrette on there like that and it just really, makes it more exciting and makes it uh, more into um, something you're looking forward to eating rather than something you have to eat. You know what I mean? Uh, we got a new member, Mr. Mr. Blum, 22. Mr. Blum, thank you very much for <clears throat> joining the Binging with Babish family. Um, Jake, we have any uh, questions that you've been waiting to, to ask? Uh, well, I'm surprised to see how many people want us to use the old Frasier song as the, lo as the you know, intro music, which you did back in the day. I'm, I'm honored by that. Maybe we'll uh, give a call into the licensing at, I don't know, 20th Century Fox or whoever owns that song and uh, see I'm what we can sure do. I'm pretty sure we can get but... rights to the song if everybody just tweets. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's, Couldn't hurt. That's though. not Couldn't true. Hurt. <laughs> everybody um, tweet okay, at NBC, okay. give Babish rights to the Frasier theme song. I've got oh, a good question for you, actually. So Hit me, hit me. Uh, <laughs> guy, guy named Alan Anderson gave you 10 bucks, right? Thanks, Alan. Thank you, Alan. He said, I live in my semi-truck. Can you make some easy one-person meals? I have a crock pot, single burner gas stove, and a toaster oven that can fit a nine-inch pizza. That's interesting, man. That's a very That's a lot of challenge. tools. Yeah, no, th that's definitely more tools than I would have guessed. And... Uh, you, there's so much that you can do with that, it's particularly a slow cooker. I mean, that's a that's a meal maker right there. Um, I should definitely do an episode of Slow Cooker Basics. That is for sure. Um, oh yeah, the thick boys love Slow Cooker Basics. All the <laughs> thick boys out there, trust me on that one. I trust you. Um, <laughs> slow Cooker Basics is definitely a good idea. Definitely something that we should look into. Uh, I guess the reason that we've not done it yet is because basics has been so oriented towards technique and like how and why does this 
uh, does this food change as you do this to it? And slow cookers are more about, you know, slowly braising things until they become fall apart tender and flavorful and all the flavors meld together, which is wonderful, but <clears throat> it is less technique oriented. But uh, there are some really interesting things that you can make in slow cookers, you know, pulled pork, uh, things that really le lend themselves to slow and low. Obviously beef stews, guys, we're coming up on winter. You can expect me to find ways to sneak all different kinds of snooze, stews, snooze, stews onto the show because I'm a stew freak and uh, I don't care who knows it. Um, I think our chicken thighs are going to be done. So, oh, we, hang on, we've got a, Amanda Stapley, $25. Thank you so much. That's very, very generous. Hey, Babish, I can tell you're a big Chef John fan, so I'm curious what recipes of his have you made? I've made a ton of Chef John's recipes. In fact, it's one of the earliest, like, serious recipes that I made was a Chef John recipe because he's been, he's been in the game for, like, nine years now. And so when I was just getting out of college and I wanted to make a really, truly great lasagna, I typed into Google, I, I, I Googled world's best lasagna. And the first one to come up was Chef, Chef John's uh, lasagna, which is called world's best lasagna. Um, since then, I've tried to make lasagna my own. Uh, he includes ricotta in his lasagna, which not crazy about. But I will say, if, if you do like ricotta and lasagna, it's pretty much the peak of the of the of the medium um it you, you i love it much better than that um we got oh my god we have oh i, I got a good oh my lord videos. a hundred of a uh, um money i don't recognize we've got uh, aman shah thank you so much for 100 uh -oh. whatever currency that is i don't know what that is love your videos babish plan on making basics with babish and spicy food indian maybe absolutely we almost did curry this last round we shoot basics in batches of like 10 episodes at a time. And, um, and uh, uh, we, 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 we almost did curry, we came this close. But I'm intimidated by curry because there's so much lore and there's so many people who take curry very, very seriously. And I didn't want to betray them because I have a limited knowledge of the, of the, of the art form. Um, so, uh, you know, definitely we'll do that one day. It's just, a cuisine that I need to learn a lot more about. So do expect that in the future, I promise. So as we're getting ready, we're gearing up here. The chicken's probably done at this point. Um, I'm going to crank up the oven a little bit because we want that sheet pan nice and hot. And I'm going to hit these potatoes with some olive oil, which isn't coming out very quickly. Got some Spanish olive oil here, mixing things up. And then I'm going to hit it with some of my unfortunate coarse sea salt. I'm gonna go light with this because I don't know how salty the salt is. I'm used to kosher salt, uh, so I don't want to over salt. So you, can always, you can always add seasoning later. I'll tell you, I do know how, how much what this pepper tastes like. So I'm gonna generously hit these with pepper. There we go. And, you know, I'm making these super duper basic. You know, the show's called Basics with Babish, folks. Uh, but I'm making them super basic because I want you to put your own spin on them. Like, yeah, you could hook these. Oh, this is way too small a bowl to be doing this. You could hook these potatoes up with tarragon or all manner of herbs. You could make a, a, a sauce for the salmon, a, a, a menu. Uh, you could make... Um, you, you, could, you could hit the asparagus with breadcrumbs and olive oil towards the end of cooking so they get nice crispy breadcrumbs and Parmesan. Maybe we'll do that. That actually sounds really good. Um, breadcrumbs and Parmesan on the asparagus, and that would be lovely. I don't think I have any Parmesan, shockingly. That's a first. Um, you know what? I don't, so never mind. I take it back. But there are so many different directions that you can take this in. How do you like your asparagus? How do you like your salmon? adapt it to this recipe like it's not hard you can do it i have faith in you so we got these guys all tossed up uh now we're going to move over to the stove because i'm going to extract the chicken from the oven because i have faith that it is done let's take a look there we go oh yeah yes sir all right so for those of you just joining us, this is a um, 
a one pot chicken bake. We got nice crispy skin on here still because the skin was never um, submerged in the liquid, just the chicken itself. Ooh, which is, wow, pushing, pushing 200, 187, 185. I was shooting for 185 and I went over, but that's okay. I mean, chicken thighs are so forgiving. Like these are not going to be dry. I promise you that. Um, definitely went too high on the temperature, but like not going to be a problem. Guarantee it. Um, so I'm going to let this rest for just a moment. Let it uh, cool off a little bit. 10 bucks says I grabbed this handle by accident and burned my hand. 10 bucks. Um, in the meantime, while we let that just hang out for a second, cause it's too hot to eat at the moment. Uh, I'm going to grab the sheet pan out of the oven. I'm going to bring it over to camera one. Ah, let's get out of here. Nice hot sheet pan. And we're going to hear these guys sizzle as I drop them down. Oh yeah. And then I'm trying to get these, you know, big, big cut side down because I want the surface area of the potato, of the, 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 the flattest surface area of the potato to be the recipient of the heat. Should probably be using gloves or something. So I'm not so afraid of the hot, hot pan. And yeah, just putting these cut side down because that's what's going to pick up the most browning because it's flat. We don't want the skin side down because that is not going to pick up as much color and flavor. Did you hear how that sizzled when we, when we, when we threw that down there? That's basically just going to give us a jump start on browning. That's all that's doing. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I promise you. There we go. All right. We got them all cut side down. Those are going in the oven and those are, whoa. Oh, okay. There we go. Oh, okay. I'm gonna rinse my hand, my oil off my hand here. All right, those are going in for 20 minutes. And I almost said, hey, you know who set a, an alarm for 20 minutes, but that would have been a mistake. So, um, Jake, can you set a timer for 20 minutes? Just because I don't want to mess up our call. Yeah, you said 20 minutes? Sorry? Tw 20 minutes. Can you hear me on the call at all? No. I can't hear you. Oh, wait. You know, I think I, think I know what the problem is. Oh, yeah. There's, there's a problem. All right. Say something. Jake? Yep. Oh, okay, that's now much I can better. Hear that's yeah. much, much better. All right. I got some good, uh, I got some good comments for you if you're uh, looking right, to chat. Hang, hang, hang on one second. Can you close the door? Yeah. And uh, can you set a timer for 20 minutes? 20 minutes. Thank you, sir. And Go now ahead. what do we got? Okay, um, we got a guy named Chris gave you 20 bucks and told you to do a collaboration Chris. with How to Drink. We love that guy. Chris, thank you so much for, for your very generous, uh, very generous contribution, um, super chat giving, and it was very, very nice of you. And yes, we do love How to Drink. We are dear friends of, of Greg from How to Drink and um, are huge fans of his show. And you can expect some collaborations from him and I in the near future. We're thinking of doing a Christmas cocktails special. Uh, I'd be doing, of course, the very basic cocktails, your, your, um, your eggnog, your, your, your buttered rum, and other things that you might expect around the holidays. And he'd do the more advanced, more um, exciting, kind of thoughtful stuff, because that's, what, that's his jam. He's, he's very good at that. Um, thank you so much for your contribution. What we're going to do now is uh, played up because I think we're ready yeah, to go and if here. Anyone out there hasn't checked out how to drink yet? Some of the nicest slow motion photography, slow motion video, you're gonna find on YouTube today. Yeah, anybody that's a camera nerd out there, they shoot all of how to drink on red, and they do beautiful slow motion shots of the, uh, you know, the alcohol being poured in and the ice being broken and all the, all the, all the, all the porny action shots they're they're you know they're, they're making them look beautiful and it is an informative entertaining fun uh uh ch a youtube channel about making cocktails so if you like cocktails go check it out it's called how to drink thank you so much again for your contribution now we're going to plate up so i'm going to grab myself a nice chicken thigh here nice crispy chicken thigh there we go it's going to be uh you know, 
There we go. Oh yeah. That bear's all nice and soft. Maybe I'll get, grab a spoon for this part. Let's get a spoon going. And, uh, you know, on, on the show, I added some nuts. I added some pecans, and that, that's definitely... You know what? I still have some, actually. Hang on. I'm going to grab those pecans. It's a very small portion, but, you know, just roll with me. Um, here we go. Got some pecans here. Just grabbing these. These are all toasted up. I toasted the whole batch and then put them back in the bag because I'm smart like that. Um, and so I'm just going to hit these with a couple pecans here. How do you guys say pecans? Do you say pecans or pecans? There we go. And, uh, you know, it's looking a little bland. So let's add some color. I'm going to head over to the, uh, the wall farm over here. You know, we've got a, um, we've got one of these, uh, 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 click and grow style deals here where I've got some fresh herbs growing and, um, I'm just going to chop up a little bit of fresh, fresh chives straight from the garden. Can't get much fresher than that. Freshly picked. And this is going to add some flavor and some color and I forgot to add maple syrup again. Oh, well, I really think sweetness would do wonders in this dish. So I am recommending that you try that. Maybe I'll, I'll add some to the, to the, uh, to the rest of the batch and just do a little taste test and we'll see if it's any good. Uh, all right. So that's adding some nice color. That's adding some good flavor. Get all that out of there. Optimize your dish. And let's dig in. I'm going to try some. Now, what I didn't do was taste the vegetables for seasoning, and that's a mistake. Um, so we'll see how that worked out. Mm. But they're perfectly seasoned. Oh, yeah. The onion was so missing from, from the last round. Got to add onion. I'm going to add that to the recipe on the website. We got perfectly cooked chicken. Knocked it right off my fork, but you can hear the crispness of that skin. Mmm. Mmm. I mean, this is just a, a chicken thigh that has been hit with salt and pepper and cooked properly, where the meat is, is properly tender. And the skin is totally crisp. And that's it. It braised in the liquids from this, uh, this uh, recipe a little bit. But mostly it's just chicken and it tastes fabulous. When you cook chicken properly and don't dry it out and include the skin and season it well, and cook, it, cook it well, it's wonderful. It's amazing all on its own. Mmm. Oh. And this is my actual dinner, folks. I have not eaten dinner, nor has Sawyer. So once I'm done here, I'm going to fix him up a plate. Because <laughs> I remember when we were shooting, I think this was his favorite. Mm. The chicken is like super moist, but tender. You know, if you... If you've ever undercooked chicken thighs, you know that they're this alarming pink color. They're perfectly safe. They're not like raw, but they haven't had the chance to break down. They haven't had a chance to become truly tender and just live up to their fullest potential. I'm just focusing on the chicken right now. I know that we've got sides here. Try some of this. Mm, the apples and the Hmm. And you can really taste the bourbon. And again, you could you could deglaze with any number of liquids like chicken stock, bourbon, white wine, <clears throat> um, vegetable stock. Uh, let's see, you could use sherry. You could use a nice dry sherry. You could do a whole bunch of stuff. There's so much latitude in these recipes. Sorry, Jake, what were you going to say? 
Oh, I just noticed we got a $50 donation and a $20 donation sitting up there. I just want to make sure we say wow. thank you so much. Yeesh. That's a, that's a uh, yeesh, yes. Rise Whitley, Whitby, that's a 50 pound donation. So really it's like a $100. Um, hey, Babish, I'm a big fan of your videos and would like to show my appreciation towards you with this donation. That is so kind, Rice. Thank you so much. That is incredibly generous. And the $20 Super chat disappeared, so I don't know who that was, but whoever you were, sir and madam, thank you so much. Very, very kind. Welcome new member, Justin Pasaparo. Um, thank you guys so much for your generosity and for coming and checking out the live streams. Like, we're, you know, this is just a fun project for us. Like, it takes a lot of effort and, and uh, you know, it takes the better part of our Thursday to get this set up and then to go through and actually make it. And, um, you guys are always so chill and so, 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 you know, contributory and kind and we can't tell you how much it means to us. Like it's really very special. The, uh, the interaction that we get with you guys. Um, so thank you. And now I'm gonna have one more bite and then I'm gonna fix up a plate for my man, Jake. While you're fixing up a plate for the old man me, you want to answer a question about grape allergies? I'd love to. This one, uh, yeah, this one hits close to home for me because my wife is allergic to a whole bunch of stuff, real funny stuff too. But uh, <laughs> Steve, Steven Shirkus asks, a lot of recipes ask for a deglazing with wine, but if you're allergic to grapes, you can't deglaze with wine. So his question <clears throat> is, can you deglaze with anything else? Yeah, I mean, you know, um, it's really going to be recipe dependent. Uh, in most cases, I would say, you know, if it's savory, if it's uh, chicken or beef or pork based, use chicken stock um, with maybe a little bit of vinegar, just a little bit, just, to, uh, just enough to give it some acidity. Um, if it's uh, something sweet, you could go with... Um, is sherry made from grapes? What is sherry made from? It's fortified. Uh, I believe so, yeah, it is, yeah. Ne 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 never mind. Um, but, you know, you could try other spirits. You could try bourbon. Bourbon's not made with grapes. I know that. Um, don't take my word for that. I don't want any. I don't want to be responsible for any uh, allergy attacks. Um, <clears throat> so let me just uh, fix up a plate for the old man here. You know, I'm, right. I'm, I'm going to experiment on you a little bit. I'm going to try. Do sorry, it. Sorry, you, 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 go for it. Uh, no, go ahead. Experiment on me. Go on. I'm gonna add just a just a hint of ma maple syrup to the. Also, I, I just want to throw this out here to the uh, people who know what they're doing in the chat. Um, I'm hiding all of the racists and anti-Semitics, and reporting the particularly gruesome ones. Is that best practices? Thanks so much. Um, the uh, the the other thing I need to mention is that we got a seventy five dollar wow. chat from the great Kyle Eldridge, strong name Kyle Eldridge, and uh, his question is one that I know you're gonna like. You talk about this all the time, online and offline, uh, public and private really persona. Right up. The, uh, the question is, is there one tip or secret that stands out more than the rest to help not dry out a boneless, skinless chicken breast? I mean, yes. Um, I will address that momentarily. Kyle, thank you so much for your extremely generous donation. Uh, Jake, if you don't mind, I'm going to forego the shives for you here. Um, this, is, this is ready to go. When I, yeah, come on and get it. Let me get you a knife, too. Buckaroo. Thank you. Ooh. All right. The maple syrup really adds something to it. It brings out the sweetness in the um, the sweet potatoes, and you know, it just it's it's season it's season appropriate. That might be good with some allspice in it or something like that. Uh, anyway, Kyle did not forget about you. Thank you again so much for your extremely generous uh, donation, um, Kyle. Uh, to prevent from drying out boneless, skinless chicken breasts. There's only two ways that I can think of doing it. First off, try to get skin on chicken breasts, bone in skin on if you can, uh, just because those are much more protected against drying out. But if you know, you're trying to be healthy, you don't want skin on there, 
Um, there's only two ways that I can think of to best cook that without drying it out. Number one would be sous vide, which again is complicated and involved. So not ideal, but you know, you'd want, you'd want to set your sous vide to about, I think about 145 or 150, probably about 145 and then sear it when it comes out and you're going to have really juicy, really moist chicken breast, almost off puttingly. So, um, so that's, that's one way to do it. The most, uh, practical, available and, um, most delicious way to do it is to marinate and pound it. So butter, start by butterflying the chicken breast. So what you're going to do is you're going to place a cut down the center of the breast and open it up like a book. So you're doubling the surface area and you're making it thinner. And then you're going to marinate it with an acid and whatever else you want. So my go-to is lime juice, garlic, or lemon juice, um, uh, 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 salt, pepper, uh, olive oil, and a little bit of sugar because the sugar is going to help the chicken brown faster because once we get it out of there, we want to cook it as fast as possible. So that means getting the interior up to 150, 155 with the exterior nice and caramelized. So a little sugar goes a long way in helping make that happen. And then you're going to pound them out, marinate them, and then fry them up uh, real quick over high heat. An example of this is in my episode Pollo a la Plancha from Moonlight, which is a Cuban dish, um, as far as I know. It's a Cuban dish that uh, is a, is a, it's a marinated chicken breast, boneless, skinless, that has been pounded thin, fried fast, and it still stays juicy and moist in the center. It's almost like the same concept behind a smash burger because the idea behind smash burgers is that you are, they're so thin that you're cooking them so fast that they don't have the chance to dry out. And uh, this is the same kind of deal. You're cooking the chicken breast so quick that it stays juicy. Um, because if you were to take a whole chicken breast, you know, one about yay thick um, and, and um, just fry it, by the time the center's cooked, the exterior is going to be black and it's going to be stringy and dry and, and whatever. So with this, you're cooking it faster and then you're losing less meat to the tyranny of heat. That sounded really cool when I said it. Um, <clears throat> Jake, how are we doing on time? What's the timer say? Mm, I have no idea. I'm just crushing this meat. Um, mm, um, <laughs> really good. Really good. Thank you. Thank you. That timer. Oh, we're five minutes away. Perfect, perfect. So what, what I'm going to do is prep the rest of our stuff here. I'm going to start by making our little vinaigrette. Um, what I'm going to do is make a combination of lemon juice, olive oil, mustard, and maybe a little fresh parsley, if and I have the time and the inclination. So one tip with, um, with citrus, before you cut into it, if you're juicing this, before you cut into it, press down and roll it like this. See what I'm doing? This is, this is crushing all the cell walls inside the lemon and it's gonna make getting juice out of it much easier. It's just a nice little thing if you're ever making cocktails or you're making a vinaigrette like this and I'm squeezing about half as hard as I might normally to get all the juice out of there. And I just want, just want the juice from this lemon. What else did I put in this vinaigrette when I did the live show. I think it was just olive oil, lemon juice, and uh, mustard, and parsley, but I cannot be sure, but I'm just going to go with it, because again, we're just kind of, we're just kind of improv tonight. That's too much lemon juice, but I'm just going to make a lot of, a lot of this, uh, this, um, whatever I just called it, this vinaigrette. Um, uh, what else we got here? We got that. We need some olive oil in there. And what th this is, you know, adding mustard to any vinaigrette is like cheating because if I were to make an emulsion out of this olive oil and this lemon, you know, I'd have to really whip the hell out of it with a, uh, with, with tiny whisk or other. In fact, let me, let me get tiny whisk. I think that he would like this job. Fans of the show might know this little guy. And, uh, I'm just going to hit this with a little bit of salt. I'm trying to season the salmon completely. So it's going to be a good amount of salt because this is going over four for salmon fillets. 
I want them to be thoroughly seasoned. So a decent amount of salt and pepper. There we go. And uh, Jake, if you wanna if you wanna pull up a question, I'm about to head, head over to the um, the herb garden again. And I, uh, we don't have an herb garden like, camera. Yeah, we, we, we'll, we'll get an herb garden camera eventually because I keep going over yeah. there for, for the live stream. We, so. we need one, yeah. So what, what, what do we got by way of uh, questions? We got Low Warlord Thirties. jumping in here with 20 Canadian bucks. Toonies. Ooh, thank you, uh, Warlord. They're curious about how to best use their KitchenAid stand mixer. Um, how do you know how fast slash long to use it? I'm sure that's going to be recipe dependent. And then any yeah. instant pot, instant pot tips, which is along the lines of the slow cooker, but um, with added features. Yeah, well, I mean, an instant pot is actually closer to a pressure cooker. I believe that those cook under pressure. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but um, pretty sure those cook under pressure. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, KitchenAid definitely gonna be recipe dependent. What I would recommend is read. Read the recipe. If it says to knead for five minutes on medium speed, put out a number five, let it go for 10 minutes. Um, it's, it's, uh, um, you just kind of, like, if you're kneading something, like say you're making bread and you want to know how long to knead it for, put it on medium speed and see how much the dough is moving. And think about, you know, how much would the dough be moving in my hand? It's probably twice as fast, three times as fast as you could feasibly knead it. And, um, yeah, just 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 kind of like do the math. So if it's like ten minutes of kneading by hand is going to be more like five minutes maybe um, with the with the KitchenAid and the dough hook on medium to medium high speed. Um, so we've got Tiny Whisk going to work here, making us. Uh, I must have done this wrong. This is way too way too uh, thin. Let me pull up my recipe real quick. Far too thin. This is supposed to be like a sauce. I'm, it might need more, um, more mustard. Actually, that's what I'm thinking. That's the only thickener in the in the party. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Um, I put a garlic clove in there. I think I just need more mustard. And so what's so what's so damned funny? Oh, Could be worse. My, mic, yeah. my, my mic wasn't on. I, I was just saying that uh, this guy Dahl spilled hot chocolate in his space heater. Not a bad, not a bad idea. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't recommend it. I, I, can't, I can't recommend it because it could be a fire hazard. But, um, you know, there are, more, there are less creative ways to... Uh, that was your five-minute warning. Oh, I'm getting, okay. Thank you. Yeah. This yeah. is still not thick enough. I want this thicker, so I'm going to keep adding mustard. I mean, mustardy salmon ain't exactly a bad thing, so I'm not too worried. There we go. That's what I want. Nice, thick vinaigrette. I think it's because I had a shit ton of lemon juice in there. Um, keep adding mustard until I get the right consistency here. There we go. There we go. I want something spreadable, something I can really pile on there. There we go. I'm going to add a little bit of this parsley to this. Save the rest for garnish. There we go. Let's give this a little... Hmm. I mean, it's very mustardy, but it's also got plenty, plenty of, um, of uh, <clears throat> lemony goodness. So we got ourselves our vinaigrette there. Now let's move this off to the side, and then we need to just get our salmon out and ready. We need to make sure that it's uh, deboned. That's some. That's a big problem with um, salmon you get from the store, is that uh, they don't always get all the bones out. So I'm going to pull the potato potatoes out, take a look at them, see how they're doing, uh, shake them around a little bit, make sure that they're not sticking too much. Let's see what kind of color we're looking at here. Oh, they sound good. Let's see. What are we looking at? Oh, it's a nice color. Not quite enough, which is perfect because I'm oh, sticking a little bit. It's okay. They're all coming right off. But let's let's take a look at the color here. See that? 
It's got a little bit of color, but we could definitely use more. So I'm just loosening them up. The ones on this side, the ones on this side of the tray have good color because they were towards the, um, you can't see that, can you? Here, I'll pull it up. The, the potatoes that were towards the, um, the other side of the sheet pan towards the center of the oven got more color because it's hotter in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm, I got all these loosened up, got them all moving around here. See the ones that didn't get enough color? These are the coldest ones over here. They're the ones that are sticking the most. Ain't life ironic? So, what, is that ironic? I don't think it's ironic. Um, so, we're gonna let these go a little bit longer. I want them nice and crisp. I'm also gonna start moving them over to the side so we have room for our, uh, our salmon and our asparagus. I'm also going to flip it around because I want the other side to be exposed to a bit more heat. I'm very surprised those aren't burned considering they're sitting on top of a pizza stone. Um, so let's prep our salmon. Grab a plate. <coughs> Very sorry for coughing. There we go. Let's get a plate going here. And let's get our salmon going here. I got some nice uh, wild Scottish, Irish something. I think it was Irish actually, which I've never heard of. I've obviously heard of Scottish salmon, but Irish salmon? Confirm that. No, it's a Scottish. I was wrong. I made that up. I just wanted a little drama in my life. All right, so here we have four small salmon fillets. I went very small because I want them to cook quickly and because it's just me and Sawyer eating tonight, so no need for a whole production. I can already feel the bones in this damn thing. This guy didn't cut them properly, so the skin is sticking. Um, yeah, it's full of bones, so we need to get those out. There we go. So to get the bones out, basically we just need to give these a little squeeze. You're going to feel them stick out. There they are. Oh, there's a lot of them. Oh, I'm glad I did this now. Shoot. I need, uh, I need my tweezers. That's what I need. My fingers, I don't have enough finger strength or fingernail to do this justice. Oh, mustn't stab ourselves in the mouths with bone. Get out of here. It's going to take way too long to do this with all four flies. That's okay. Oh, come on. Hit me with another question while I'm boning here. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, we had some questions about your where you hung out and uh, lived in the great city of Rochester. Well, I am indeed from the great city of Rochester. Uh, I grew up in a little town called Menden, most famous for its cornfields and four-way stop sign. Uh, I then later on in life, uh, actually in college, my parents moved to another place called Pittsford. Uh, as for, as for hangout places, um, you know, when, when I was trying to impress my girlfriend at the time, we'd go to the spots for coffee. We'd, uh, we'd, um, go to tastings by Wegmans. I mean, we'd spend a lot of time at Wegmans. I mean, Wegmans is the shit for anybody from upstate. I know that they're going to be blowing up the comments right now. Uh, saying how awesome Wegmans is because that's the truth. It is the finest grocery store known to man. And uh, I am as proud of it as, as a, 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 a father might be of a son, even though I didn't, I had nothing to do with its inception. But, um, oh, there's a bone in here that just does not want to come out. There we go. Come on. Oh, this is loaded with bones. You got to be careful. These aren't going to, like, mess up your mouth too bad or anything. They're not going to cut you, but... Boy, if they aren't really unpleasant to bite into. Normally I'd be using tweezers for this, but I don't know where my culinary tweezers are. I'm just using my human fingers. As, Jer as Jeremy would say from um, Peep Show, your disgusting human fingers. Oh, and this guy feels pretty bone-free. 
you just got to squeeze. I'm just taking the whole thing and I'm squeezing it length uh, width wise and, and uh, that's, that's going to indicate to me if there are any bones in there. All right, so now we've got some um, vinaigrettes, which we're going to just kind of, there we go. We're just going to coat these guys up with the vinaigrettes. There we go. Oh, yeah. <coughs> uh, Death be, uh, Metal Fun Zone, he said, let's get this salmon out on a tray. Let's get these salmon out onto a tray. Nice. Okay. Any Steve1989 MRE fans out there? Because we are one of those. Two of those. We are fans of his. Uh, Steve, if for those of you who don't know, Steve1989 MRE is the most relaxing, sweetest, most interesting channel that I've come across uh, in some time. Um, it is food related, but he, what he does is he, uh, reviews, uh, military MREs meals ready to eat. And, um, he, he does it in the most meditative and lovely way. It's uh, very hard to describe. Go check it out. Um, I fall asleep to it every night and I'm not joking. I bring my laptop into bed. You know, if you, if you saw me in the morning, you'd think, oh, he was looking at pornography, but no, I was watching Steve. Uh, because he, he lulls me straight to sleep. He, he's, he's the, I know some people watch my show to go to sleep, so I don't, I don't mean that as an insult. I mean it as quite a compliment. Um, we have our salmon fillets all hit with the vinaigrette right now. I'm going to set those aside. Uh, and I'm just going to give the, um, give the asparagus a little tossy toss, as my man Brad would say, with olive oil. So I'm just going to grab these guys. I'm going to season them with salt and pepper and hit them with some olive oil. And, uh, you know, nothing. I mean, the best thing to do this in would be like a, tr be like a tray. Um, but I don't have one of those handy. So we're just going to, we're just going to put this right here. I'm totally going to say that when I put this stuff on, onto the tray, I'm definitely going to be quoting Steve up and down, left and right. So buckle up, folks. Hit that with a healthy amount of salt and pepper. There we go. And then I'm simply going to give these a little tossy toss. I'm just quoting YouTubers left and right here. What other YouTubers should I quote? There's, um, there's Chef John. So you, after, you are, after all the... Um, the, uh, I can't think of anything that rhymes with asparagus. <laughs> um, you, um, you are, after all, the Marvin Gaye of your salmon filet. Huh? That was good. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, I think you should right. be aware that the, uh, the chat is trying to play a prank on us, play a prank on us, I should say, and it's working. They keep telling me there's a spider in the, on the screen. And uh, I've, I've looked for a spider like five times so far, so... Uh, well, you're scared. That worked. I don't like that. I don't yeah. like spiders. They, they just say, spider, watch out, <laughs> spider. <laughs> and every time it gets... You guys it. are mean. You guys are mean. There's no, big, there's no spiders big enough in New York that, that you could possibly see them from that far away. Okay. So I'm going to grab the tray. I'm going to grab the tray, and then we're going to get all these out onto the tray. Here we go. Potatoes are looking good. I'm gonna give them a little shake, make sure they're loosed. So they're moving around, not sticking. They got some good color going on. And uh, how about, let's move it over to this camera. And uh, what I'm gonna do is just sort of push these guys over as far as they'll go. You can start, they have all the, all the color that they need now. You see they're nice and brown. So stacking them up doesn't really matter. Like you'd never bake potatoes like this because it would be a disaster. You'd, 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 I'd never forgive you. But now that they've browned up, they've got all the, all the Maillard they need and they're nice and crisp, they're not going anywhere. Don't you worry about them. And uh, so now we're just going to, you know, I'm going to oil this first because I forgot to oil my salmon fillets and they're going to stick like glue if I don't. I'm just going to hit this with a little bit of oil. Come on. There we go, a little bit of oil, and uh, spread that out a little bit. 
So just because we, we just want to lube up for the for the salmon fillets. There we go. Hit me. Like you personally? Huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, that is a valid question. Just so, and first off, just so everybody knows, I'm washing my hands right now, getting them nice and clean because I just touched salmon. Let me just make sure these are good and sanitary. Um, so to answer your question, uh, it's a good question. Um, oh, there's a chance I, people didn't hear it. My mic was low for some reason. The question was just, how do you keep your pans, those uh, baking sheets, so fresh and clean? So fresh and so clean. Uh, I will tell you. Um, first off, one of my secrets is what I did before, which is I preheated this pan, and that helped just sort of get a jump start on the Maillard reaction with potatoes, so the potatoes did not stick to the pan like they might ordinarily. Um, they just they just lifted right off because they formed a crust just like we did on the stainless steel um and then you know for stuff that's really caked on if you're baking some bacon which you know as you guys know is my favorite way to make bacon is to bake it um you you simply uh here hang on i'm just gonna get this guy in the oven uh, now that we got these guys not in under the tray all right. Um, so here, I'm going to go back over to camera one and we'll do, we'll do a little talking. Can you set a timer for 15 minutes, please? 12 minutes, 12. 12, 12 minutes. Great. So um, uh, to answer your question, um, this camera is really low. Uh, whatever. Um, to answer your question, uh, uh, what was I saying? So you, uh, if, if you get a bunch of crap really baked on there, I pour um, a kettle full of boiling water with soap into the tray and let it soak, you know, overnight. You, you need a rimmed baking sheet, obviously, to do that so you can hold the water. And you need to do it in the sink or next to the sink in case you spill. Um, and uh, and uh, throw some soap in there, let it sit overnight. And most of that stuff will lift right off. Um, if you're talking about carbonized, you know, deep brown kind of stuff like the you know oil that has that has um uh i believe the the term is carbonized where it's where it's become a polymer essentially and it has bonded to the metal of the uh, baking sheet that's actually kind of a desirable trait um you want to sort of keep that up especially with the castle with the with the aluminum and eventually your 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 sheet pan will have a patina all over it and that'll be the one that you'll use for sticky things because it'll be essentially kind of naturally non-stick in the same way that um, seasoned um, carbon steel or uh, um, cast iron does. It has that sort of natural non-stick properties. And then uh, I try to use my pristine ones, my pristine sheet pans for the show. Um, and uh, I try to you know, hit them with high heat. That's the, that's the, that's the key is to have it preheated that can be very helpful in preventing things from sticking. And as you might have noticed, because it's because it's kind of a catchphrase of mine, uh, I always say parchment line baking sheet. That's there's a video, there's a supercut of me out there saying parchment line baking sheet like a million times, and it sounds like the Borg. And um, there's a reason for that. It prevents things from sticking. It prevents things from burning. It uh, prevents buildup from happening on your pans. Uh, it makes things a whole lot easier. So line your you can get some um, for like five bucks. I got this pack of a hundred, you know, perfectly sized sheets of parchment paper. These are sized to, to fit right on the, the aluminum, uh, the, the full size sheet. And this will run you like six, seven bucks on Amazon. And uh, it's just so convenient and it makes cleanup such a breeze. Um, that's the way to go. That's my answer to that question. Next. Um, 
Kyle Eldridge sent us another 10 bucks, wants to send you some liquor, and he asked how he could reach out personally. Hit us at that bingingwithbavish at gmail.com. I almost just I almost just poured maple syrup into my in my bourbon, <laughs> in my in oh, my whiskey yeah. glass. I almost just because oh, ju- yeah. it looks it looks like like a like a little bourbon bottle. So I almost just that would have been kind of nice actually. I prefer this though. Thank you. Oh, and also we've had um, Ketura ask you if you prefer cooking or baking, and when are you gonna do another Brad video? <laughs> I will do another Brad video as soon as that guy gets back from Italy. He's in Italy right now. Go check out his Instagram. He's checking out some really cool stuff out there. Um, from what I hear, he's going to be going truffle hunting at some point. Or he already went truffle hunting. Uh, no, yeah, he already did a, a video on truffle hunt, hunting. Um, and uh, I, I'd love to do a new Brad video as soon as possible. What was the first half of that question? What do you like better, baking or cooking? I like cooking better by a wide margin. Baking is a very precise science, something that I'm not terribly good at. In this stream tonight, I've forgotten like three or four elements. I forgot to put, um, uh, uh, see, I've forgotten what I've forgotten already. Um, <laughs> I forgot to put something in the, in the chicken with the vegetables. I forgot to put the maple syrup in there initially. I put it in there later on. Um, I... Uh, forgot to put garlic in the vinaigrette for the salmon. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, and I can roll with the punches. Like, you know, I know the salmon's still going to be good without the garlic. I can add maple syrup later on with the with vegetables. You can roll with the punches with cooking. If I had a batch of something in the oven and I realized, oh shoot, I forgot to whip the eggs or I forgot to add baking soda. Guess what? You're toast. <laughs> like. It's a, it's, it's a very precise science, and I'm not terribly good at it. So I, I definitely prefer cooking to baking. Baking is, uh, anybody who can, is very good at baking, I have a lot of respect for. Um, anybody who's very good at cooking, I have a lot of respect for too, but it's a different kind of respect. It's an admiration and a, and a wonder when it comes to baking, especially people who can consistently make great bread. Like it, That takes a special kind of genius to, to be able to... To do that, so you have my, you have my sword. What? Um, so, anyway, those of you who are just joining us, um, we are making quick weeknight meals. Just made a chicken, um, a one-pot chicken meal of crispy chicken thighs with uh, sweet potatoes, apples, onions, bourbon, um, and fresh sage. Uh, and in the oven right now, we have a sheet pan dinner, which is an entire dinner all made on the same sheet pan. Um, in this case, uh, we're doing uh, roast asparagus, roast potatoes, and salmon with a uh, mustard vinaigrette. And it's, you know, these are all, these are both very simple recipes. And that's because I want you guys to use them as jumping off points. Like with, as I mentioned in the, in the episode, with the um, chicken dish, you can... You can deglaze with different kinds of alcohol or for, forego alcohol together and use, just use chicken stock and vinegar or whatever you'd like in there. And not whatever you'd like, but you know, a lot, there's a lot of different possibilities you can do there. Um, you can also swap out the potatoes for root vegetables or for, you know, celeriac or, or um, uh, parsnips or whatever. Those are all root vegetables. You, you get my meaning. And you could try to go for more of a savory kind of fall vibe instead of a uh, sweet and savory like I did. Um, and for the sheet pan dinners, it's just all about, it just all comes down to timing. It comes down to finishing each element when, or starting each element when it needs to be started so they all finish at the same time. Potatoes take about 30, 40, 40 minutes to bake. So we put those in 20 minutes before we added salmon and asparagus, which both take 12 to 15 minutes to cook. So they're all going to come out at the same time, all fully cooked. And even if they don't, even if you miscalculate and the salmon isn't, isn't done yet, but the asparagus and potatoes are overcooking, take them out, cover them in foil, and, and um, keep cooking the salmon, or vice versa. The salmon is at its done point. It's at 125 degrees, and you don't want to go a degree higher, but the asparagus is still crunchy. Take, take the salmon out of the situation, cover it in foil, get the rest of it fully cooked, and, you know... 
the, the, the ultimate goal is to have everything done at the same time, but it's very forgiving. And again, if you roll with the punches, you can synchronize the whole affair and uh, easy, as pie, easy as pie. Um, it just takes a little bit of practice and uh, a little exercise of basic technique. And there's some nice little shortcuts you, and, and, and tricks that you can incorporate to help the process along. There's preheating your sheet pan so you can get a jump start on the Maillard reaction with the potatoes, get some nice browning going before you even introduce everybody else into the situation. There's, um, you know, there's uh, 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 braising the chicken thighs above the liquid, semi-submerged in the liquid so the skin is still poking, not submerged and not uh, underneath anything. So the skin stays crisp and the meat gets juicy and tender. Uh, you know, these, these, are, these are very universal things that you can make your own and, and, and experiment and play with and you're going to end up with something delicious. Um, so yeah, tonight we're making weeknight meals. We are waiting on the salmon to come out the oven. I'm going to take a look at the comments here. We've got, um, let's see, Malagron. Thank you very much for a $10, uh, super chat. Really appreciate it. Is there a rule of thumb for how long sous vide meats that are frozen versus thawed? There's no rule of thumb. It's going to depend on the thickness of the meat, the kind of meat, um, pretty much those two things. Uh, uh, you can look up charts if you search for sous vide um, temperature time charts. You can find charts that, that depict how long, say, steak or chicken or pork need to be sous vide from frozen or from fresh. It's going to vary wildly depending on what you're making. Um, so yeah, there's no rule of thumb. There's no consistency there. Any given thing that you take out of the freezer and sous vide might need to be cooked at a different temperature than anything else uh, or a different amount of time. So look it up. Don't, don't, there's no sort of tried and true with that, unfortunately. I missed the other, oh, Christopher Renninger. Renninger uh, what do you recommend for a good budget chef, uh, chef knife? And we covered this before, but I'll just do it very quickly. The Vustoff Pro, uh, Pro Line, 8 inch chef's knife. Very cool because it's got a handle that is perfectly designed for teaching you how to properly hold the knife uh, with your finger sort of wrapped around one side and your thumb gripping the other because of this curved handle. You can see that there. And uh, it's great for learning. It's nice. It's wicked sharp and it's only 20 bucks. So ch check that out. <coughs> Pardon me. Vustoff Pro Line. Thank you so much for your generous donation. Um, yeah. I'm just catching up on comments here. Something, something right here. I'm way behind in the comments. Steampunk Risen asked for uh, any recommendations for cheap meals. These, these are cheap meals. Um, chicken thighs are inexpensive because uh, American, at least in, in, in America, uh, chicken thighs are less expensive because Americans, for some reason, vastly prefer white meat. Um, so white meat is very expensive. Uh, the more boneless and skinless it becomes, the more uh, the, the more boneless and skinless the chicken is, the more expensive it becomes. Um, so bone-in, skin-on chicken thighs are going to be some of the cheapest cuts of chicken you can find. Um, and, uh, you know, salmon is definitely more expensive, but you could get farmed salmon. You could get some, you know, you can get all this stuff at the supermarket, and I'm betting that you could pull it off for 20 bucks and you could feed four people no problem. Um, and that's less than you're going to spend at McDonald's and you're going to have a more filling, way more nutritious meal. Uh, and I think I was about to say taste here. That's not true. I'm sorry, but very few things in this world are as delicious as a Big Mac. Um, hmm. Let's see. Get a huge screen for chat, Babby. That's true. Dude, I, we have a TV in here. I should, I should hook my laptop into the TV so I don't have to... That's a really good idea. Also, the uh, salmon should be ready. Oh, timer. the timer went off? All right, let's take a look here. Let's go over to camera two. It's looking good, but let's take its temperature. These are very small, thin cuts of salmon, so they're, they're gonna be done pretty quick, but I bet they're not done yet. I was setting the timer to be um, as uh, forgiving as possible here. All right, so we're at one, ooh, wow, one, 
What do we got here? 122. Check this guy. Oh, wow, these are done. I don't believe it. 120. So, okay, the, ones toward, the one towards the front is done, but the one in the back are not quite. And I don't feel like switching them around. The best part here is that, like, you know, if you've got some family members that are freaked out by, like, medium, um, not medium, yeah, medium rare salmon at, like, one, 125 degrees, you can have one that's up there around 130. So it's a little firmer and less, less pink and, um, and uh, 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 um, what's, the, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, pink and uh, soft in the center. That's not the word I was looking for, but that's what I'm going to use. Head back over to camera one. Um, and uh, you, can, you can sort of cook things for the, for the whole family. One of my favorite cuts of meat in the world for finicky families. So say dad likes his, his, um, his steak medium well, like my, like my dad does. Say mom likes hers medium rare. And one of the kids likes it medium rare because they're crazy. And the other one likes it medium well because they're picky. Uh, flank steak is an unbelievable cut of meat because if you look at it, it's, um, the, the, the meat is, is shaped like this. It's, it, it's got a very thick part that tapers down to a very thin part. So in the same amount of time, in the same amount of cooking time, you're going to have very well done meat on the, re on the thinner part the thinner side of the meat and then medium, medium rare meat towards the thicker side. So it's perfect for a crowd that likes steaks at different donenesses, uh, even though you want to just make one big old hunk and cut of meat. It's perfect for grilling. Not the time of the year, year that for, not the time of year for that anymore, unfortunately, but uh, it's, um, it's, 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 it's a really great, uh, uh, pretty economical cut too. Like it is expensive for a whole one, but you're gonna, you could feed probably six, seven people with it easily with a, with a decent sized flank stick. The things are big, but yay, yay long. And you know, at its thickest point about yay thick. Uh, and they're perfect for, you know, just slicing and serving as is, or you can serve them with a pan sauce of some kind, uh, or you can chill, you can slice and then chill them. And they're perfect for like steak salad. Um, it's a very versatile, very delicious kind of meat. What else we got going on here? Where's the lamb sauce? It's raw. Cook me. Is it, what's up with lamb sauce? I don't even know what. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, we do. $45 from Sophia Hanif. Thank you so much. That is extremely generous. What is the oddest video request you've ever gotten? Um, a guy asked me to eat him on camera. Does that count? Um, uh, oddest video request I've ever gotten. You know, actually, one of the most popular video requests that I refuse, I frankly refuse to do because it sounds super disgusting is, um, uh, 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 what's his name? Um, what's the name of the older brother from Malcolm in the Middle? Reese. Reese is um, turkey stuffed in a monkfish. And I know that that's sitcom writers trying to gross us out. And I'm not, I'm not going to fall for that. I, I'm not gonna gonna play their game. Um, I, I that sounds absolutely repugnant, and um, I uh, uh, I, ref I refuse to do it. I don't want it in my house. Um, so I think this guy's probably ready to come out now. We're gonna take it out, take its temperature. But some of those salmon fillets were done. Some of them were just like five degrees shy of being done. So I'm betting anything that they're all done now. Okay. Oh, they're looking good. I'm trying to angle them so you can see them okay. The light is kind of blown out there. Here, I'll bring them over to camera A. We should have a little bit. Oh, yeah. That, see, the color is much more balanced on this camera. There we go. Look at that. We got ourselves a meal, and that took, like, none time, okay? I'm going to garnish the uh, salmon with a little bit of parsley, a little bit of freshly chopped parsley. That's going to give it some color and some... Some flavor too, you know. Parsley does have a lovely vegetal flavor that it adds adds some dimension to um, simple dishes. So it's not just for looks. And these potatoes are like shatteringly crisp. I don't know if you can hear that, but oh, mm, hot. I mean, understandably, just came in out of the oven. Um, but like, nice and crisp. Ooh, why am I holding these things with my bare human hands? The asparagus is tender. 
And you know, this is so basic right here, obviously. This is a very basic meal, but you can make it your own however you want. You could toss the potatoes with a vinaigrette right now. You could, um, you know, uh, toss the potatoes with herbs before you roast them even. You could hit the uh, asparagus with breadcrumbs and Parmesan. You could, um, what else could you do with the asparagus, roast asparagus? You could make hollandaise sauce and serve it with hollandaise and a poached egg. You could, oh, hot. Oh, oh, hot. That's some hot potato. Oh, I'm going to feel that tomorrow. Wow. That was a hot potato. Okay, we're going to let this cool off for a second. Um, I'm going to move it over a little bit, and then I'll pl plate it up so Sawyer and I can have our second dinner. Uh, but, like, look at that. It's just so wholesome and simple and nutritious. Like, I'm very happy with this the way it is. I know that it might not be complex enough for, for some folk, but for a weeknight meal, for something that we threw together in none time at all, it's pretty awesome. It's just like inexpensive, fast. I don't have any clean plates somehow. That's crazy. Um, I guess I'm going to recycle my plate from before. Do a little bit of dishes live on camera. That's exciting, right? Viewership counts just plummeting. Um, I just need to wash the plate real quick, folks. Pardon me. What kind of questions we got? Anybody uh, need to know anything? Oh, we got a request to do basics on potatoes. We got uh, 10 bucks from Jelaine Johnson. Loves the channel, has learned a lot. We really appreciate that. We really love hearing people who are, you know, cooking and trying things out and keeping themselves well fed. It's a nice thing to see and we appreciate you letting us know. Thank you so much for your very generous uh, contribution. Thank you for um, for, for sharing that with us. We definitely do love hearing how people are using the recipes and, and uh, learning any, anything from, you know, somebody who's learning themselves. Like, a lot of times you guys are seeing me make things for the first time on this show. So we're learning together often. Um, all right, so we got a nice clean plate here. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and serve up here. I'm going to grab some asparagus. Get some of that smelly pea going on. Sorry. Um, grab one of these salmon fillets, which slipped right. Oh, I lost the skin, but that's okay. I don't. I don't like salmon skin. But I tried to prevent that with the um, with the oil down, but apparently that wasn't enough. And then some nice crispy potatoes. Oh yeah. And there you have it, like super easy to angle this so we can see everything. There we go. Super easy, super, you know, simple, inexpensive, nutritious, uh, relatively healthy. I mean, potatoes are not like the healthiest thing in the world, but there's certainly, <laughs> there's definitely worse out there. If you're talking about this versus McDonald's, <coughs> sorry, I keep bringing up McDonald's. Like, I know that's kind of a cliche, but... Um, it's uh, it's just a, it's just a matter of like uh, this is really tasty, inexpensive, easy to throw together, and uh, let's let's give this salmon a shot. Mmm. Mmm. Lemon, mustard, a little bit of the, the parsley, and that like you know, nice oceanic salmon flavor. I just see the most beautiful potato here. I want to eat it. I know it's not on my plate, but. Mm. Potatoes are crisp and, you know, they're just salt and pepper, but like, how can you go wrong with just simple roasted potatoes? And the asparagus, again, just salt and pepper. We're, let, we're letting the ingredients sing, but even if you didn't want to do that, if you wanted more complex flavors, more interesting stuff going on, by all means, you know, mm. the asparagus perfectly cooked. It's not mushy, it's still got body. The tips are just a little bit crisp, just from the heat, and you see that like the tips are splintering up a little bit. Mm. I love asparagus. 
There, I said it. I feel better. Mm. Try a little bit more of the salmon. And just like that, okay, so it's been two and a half hours. You made two fast weeknight meals. Obviously, these aren't going to take an hour and 15 minutes each. That's because I'm talking to you guys and we're, we're having a good time. We're taking our time. But if you were just focusing on this, listening to some tunes and just knocking it out, you could, you could have this done. You could have each of these done in half an hour, 45 minutes, no problem. Hmm. I do love salmon. Salmon's a new, a new, a new pleasure for me. Um, mm. Unfortunately, I'm a little full from the whole dinner I just ate, so I'm not going to eat all this. But mm. those potatoes. Now again. There are ways that you can make potatoes more crispy. You could parboil them. You can, um, <clears throat> once you've parboiled them, Ken, J. Kenji Lopez all pioneered a wonderful method where you parboil potatoes with spiked, spiked in water spiked with vinegar. And you toss them until they're all rough and craggly. And then you toss them with like duck fat or some other, you know, um, really rich fat of some kind, shortening um, oil. And then you roast them. And then all those craggles kind of like soak up the oil and it kind of like deep fries almost in, in its own fat in the oven. And you get incredibly crispy potatoes. But it's very labor intensive. This took a few minutes and we've got crispy potatoes. They're not as crisp as Kenji's to be sure. But they were done in, in 40 minutes. Like, and they're still crisp. Mm. All right, Jake, do you want any of this? Yeah, sure. I don't need a full plate. I can just come in, in there and pick when we're done. All right. Well, folks, thank you so much for tuning into the live stream. Here, I'll cut, hop, hop down here, change the focus so that I am in focus. There we go. Hey, thank you guys so much for hanging out um, tonight and cooking with me. Watching, watching uh, as 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 I cooked. Um, thank you for watching the show. Thank you all the uh, the um, super chat folk that uh, that gave such generous uh, contributions to the show. Thank you for your amazing questions and comments and queries and 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 for sharing your experiences and 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 your critiques and your praise and everything. Um, you guys are the most amazing audience in the world, and um, I'm so thrilled that you're learning anything from this show and I hope that you do try these yourselves because they're so easy they're so quick um, and if you normally are ordering takeout with your with your with your your special someone uh, and they you they come home and you've surprised them with you know a home-cooked meal as simple as this might be you know roast asparagus roast potatoes and salmon with some some mustard sauce as plain simple as this might be this is such a gesture to come home to, a home-cooked meal, something that somebody paid attention to and put together and crafted and, and made just for you. Um, so I hope that you make this for yourself, for someone you care about. I hope you care about yourself too, so that counts. Um, I hope that you make this for somebody you care about and, um, and just give it a shot because uh, it's, worth, it's worth the effort and it's not that much. It's, you know talking about 45 minutes active work. Um, and uh, thank you guys so much again for hanging out. I see we're all, we're all filtering out now. Um, and uh, have a great night. Happy eating. And uh, I'll see you guys next week on Basics. Uh, I think we're going to be doing homemade pasta part two, I think. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. That or donuts. One of those two. I've insisted on one of those two. I'm very excited for pasta part two because I did tortellini and brodo which is one of my favorite things in the whole world. So I made four cheese tortellini uh, in some uh, very flavorful um, uh, stock with Parmesan grated over top. <clears throat> it's one of life's great pleasures. Uh, and even if that isn't next week's episode, donuts are because, and I made um, jelly filled, cream filled, and, uh, and sour cream donuts, all of which are amazing. Um, 
So thank you guys so much again for hanging out. Have a beautiful night. Here's to you. And uh, let's get down to basics. <laughs> that's not a sign-off line. I need a good sign-off line. Um, um, how about see you tomorrow on PSN, Easy Bake Andy, Red Dead Redemption 2. That's, that's a good, good sign-off line. Check out Easy Bake Andy on PSN. Probably going to live stream to PSN and Twitch or whatever they let us do. I'm going to be playing Red Dead all day tomorrow. I have a couple calls that I need to take and I have some writing to do. I, I'm not going to play all day tomorrow, but I've got my boys coming over here. We're going to be playing all day tomorrow. We are going to be playing all day. Be it me, be it Andy, be it Ari, who you'll meet on PSN. It's going to be great. It's going to be a good time. Come check us out. Easy Bake Andy. Um, it's just a new part of the Babish comic universe, the BCU. And uh, uh, I hope you guys have a great night. Thank you again so much for hanging out. Thank you very much for Super Chat. Uh, uh, any, any folks who, who Super Chatted, thank you to my new members. Go check out the exclusive content in the Each Community tab of my channel. And we'll see you guys next week. Good night. Here's to you.